day so far. Uh, we are games done quick, and I believe we just finished up with Bargain Bin, which has been pretty fun to watch so far coming from this end, a brand new show. And now, uh, as we approach the night, we'll be going into our new show, a second half known as Speed Runs from the Crypt. Uh, I come here from, I guess, the Crypt to bring you a variety of many horror games. So I do want to welcome you all. Welcome uh, boil, boils, ghouls, and other non-binary spirits of the night. Uh, tonight's theme, and we're going to hit you with theme every night, is going to be about horror games that use special tools. Because I believe we can all use a little help around this time. And as well, it is the holiday season, so having that help is even nicer. Anyway, uh, our first game on the show is going to be a game known as Onimusha. Onimusha is a Japanese horror game where you play as a samurai needing to stop the demon hordes from pretty much taking over. Uh, that being said, our hero tonight is going to be Bowie the Hero. And let's take it away and let's bring you some of these stories. Are you ready, Bowie? I most certainly am. Thank All you right. very much indeed for welcome, well, welcoming me in. Um, Dice, it's a pleasure to work alongside you, and thank you for having me uh, to be kind of like your opening run for Speed Runs from the Crypt. Um, yes, indeed. So Onimusha Warlords is the first part of the Oni Onimusha series, created by the Resident Evil team. Uh, they wanted to make a bit of a different spin on that kind of Resident Evil style. So rather than going for a survival horror, we have then the action horror genre, uh, which is still very, very precise and very resource intensive. And of course, that uh, mysterious tool that uh, is going to be um, assisting our samurai hero will be shown very, very quickly, uh, very, very shortly. So um, yeah, Ek will be joining me. It's uh, kind of like we'll talk you through this game as we go. Um, you may remember if you watched SGDQ 2017, I did run this game uh, on the original PS2 version uh, back then. However, I am playing this on the PS4 because last year, at the beginning of 2019, I believe it was there, we had a HD re release of Oni Oni Musha Warlords that came to PS4, uh, Steam, and Switch. So, uh, a few new things have happened since then, um, and. Uh, yeah, we can do a few more, a few new things with this version of the game, new m uh, movement choices and stuff like that. Uh, and last time I played it in, in English, and I recommend if you want to hear the English voice acting, go and have a little check on, 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 on that. But we're going to keep it super authentic today, because we are in feudal Japan. Let's keep it in Japanese today. Um, so I think we really want to just get going, I believe, Ek, right? Uh, that we do. Perfect, excellent. Let's not beat around the bush. Um, and you may remember I used a special costume for Sam for Samonosuke last time. We're not going to do that today. <laughs> because, again, we want to keep it authentic. So uh, let's get that timer going in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. And the speed runs from the crypt begin. So, welcome to feudal Japan. Uh, the, ni the night before the moment of what's going on, there was the battle of Oki Hazama, where the, uh, the warlord Nobunaga Oda uh, took, a, uh, took an arrow to the neck and died. However, he sold his soul to the demons and pledged to serve them forever as, as their slave. Um, at this point, uh, Samonosuke rushed to the aid of Princess Yuki, who he, he, he found just the letter left behind and no princess to be uh, seen. To which he goes to a nearby keep where he believes Princess Yuki may be held. And uh, lo and behold, he's a very uh, sharp gentleman, is Mr. Samonosuke, because there is Princess Yuki herself. Yukihime! Yukihime! Okay, so we're gonna get straight into it. One, two, three, little spin. One, two, three, little spin. One, two. So that's a cool new thing. Um, the original game for Only Mission Warlords, the original release, only had uh, D-pad controls, similar to old Resident Evil tank controls. Now, I know many of you are thinking, ah, tank controls, they're great. Um, very, very logical, very, very wonderful to see. However, we did have added in for more <laughs> modern play style control stick controls. Now, uh, you think you'd wanna use them all, all of the time, right? Wrong. There are times when D-pad and uh, original tank controls will be more important than control stick controls. However, as you saw at the beginning, rather than doing a 1-2-3 hit combo and then like strafing backwards or forwards in order to wait for the reset of the animation to get one, three more hits, because you need to hit those first guys eight times, I can instead do a 360 on the controls and go straight back into the attack combinations, speeding up certain um, attack resets. So that's kind of our first thing to be done. And, and we've done, we, we've done it, we've saved the princess, right? 
because we've got Osric, the big red lad, who's going to be showing up. Flee while you can, you worthless bugs! Uh, I love Osric so much. Oh, okay, he's great, yeah. Um, I think uh, the reason I'm playing in Japanese, by, by, by the way, is because uh, if you played the in English version, you may remember how like legendary the English track is. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty good at Guildenstern. Now, I'm not saying that just to <laughs> stroke my own ego, but I'll give you a little taster of, uh, of my Guildenstern a bit later, but I won't go too much into it because it's all about the horror and, and the atmosphere. Now, this game, as I said, is kind of like the action horror style. Um, it is kind of a little bit more active than just kind of like, you know, Resident Evil's very like stop, start, take aim, shoot. You have a little bit more um, agency in the action that's going on. But again, it's very precise. It's very specific movement and specific action that you have to deal with. Um, so here is where this whole thing comes to, to comes to start. After you get absolutely bodied by Osric into the wall by that massive mace, um, Samonosuke falls into... Um, a kind of like dreamlike state. Not really that much of a dreamlike state, but he is met by the leaders of the Ogre Clan, and they um, present um, Samonosuke with the power to defeat the demons, um, because basically, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, Nobunaga wanted to obviously uh, take over the land, so he sold his soul to the demons to become this evil demonic warlord, um, and then he could control the hordes of demons to kind of get what he wants. So. The Ogre Clan. Samonosuke, defeat and seal your souls to your right hand. And boom, the Oni Gauntlet becomes his. With that uh, stunning little eye as well, the little little like circle kind of like opens up, up, up the eye to blink every now and then. It's really unnerving. <laughs> but essentially what's going to happen is uh, this gauntlet will allow um, Samonosuke to not only, well basically when he defeats demons, can then absorb whatever kind of power or essence is left from them afterwards. And there are three, there are three types of orbs. Red, yellow, and blue. Yellow is our HP, blue is MP and our magic gauge, and then red is our experience points. Um, so you gain a certain amount, amount of souls and you can upgrade different weapons and different magic powers so that you can progress throughout the game. And there'll be very, very specific ways that we're going to do that. So we're going to get straight into this run. Uh, D-pad controls, control stick controls, control stick controls. Control sticks allow um, like immediate direction changes, and that's the biggest reason we're going to be using it, rather than the strafing and the slow turning from the tank. Of course, the tank controls give us a little bit more like you know, nerves and eeriness, because again, it's a static background game. It's fixed camera angles that change as you go to certain areas to allow certain monsters to be hanging around corners and to scare you out all, all of a sudden. Speaking of which... These are our... This is our first uh, interaction with these skeleton demons, and also the first time I'm going to show you a very important skill, the Isen. Come on, mate. Or I, could, or, or I could be good at the game. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so the Isen is a very important skill. I nailed it, 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 it the first three three times and completely crapped the bed. Uh, the Isen is a kind of one-shot counter-strike uh, move that is done by inputting a, a, the attack button at the moment that you're about to take the damage, and then you evade and strike them down in, in one. That's the basic oh, Isen, and I did that for the first couple of times, the first time, like, just evade and counter. Press attack at the last possible moment, bosh. There's also a second kind of Isen for Samonosuke, which is called the Hajiki Isen, which is when you guard at the perfect time. Now, normally, when you guard, you'll take the hit and, like, glance backwards. However, if you time it right, you'll see Samonosuke kind of knock forward and kind of, like, push the enemy back. And that means that if you press the attack button afterwards, you'll not, you'll kind of like glance the blow away and then slice through and get a, a horizontal kill. So off we go. The guys tell you um, tell you about the nearby fort and what we need to go and do uh, and uh, where the uh, the monsters went to. So let's go. A few kind of, kind of changes here as well. Oh, hello. Or we can just do that. Um, some changes that happened with the game. Um, tech speed is much faster in this. Lovely. Love to see it. Um, you can see it just like, it, rather than having to like, kind of like hold down the button to scroll the text, I can just mash away. <clears throat> and we'll go through our first, uh, first the little, uh, I guess labyrinth, it's not very, not that lab 
labyrinthine, but we'll just get through these, these last two dudes here. And pick up our first power up. This is um, where the Oni Gauntlet, you can see now it's got a little purple eye, so that eye color changes based on the um, elemental power that we are infusing uh, through the gauntlet in, into the, uh, the power of these orbs and these swords that come with them. So with the uh, Shiden orb, we get Ryzan, which is the name of the sword here. Um, one, two, three. So again, I'm going to be defeating demons. Now, if you look on the top left of my screen, uh, of, well, the screen in general, or the top left of, of the game screen, you'll see uh, two gauges, the yellow HP bar, and blue MP bar, and then obviously the big blue circle next to it. That's the orb that's in effect. Below that, it says like double zero, and then there's a little pink line starting on the left. That is the bars of souls we have. Every single uh, bar is worth 1,000 souls, and we'll get told exactly how much we have as we go. So, um, because it's, you know, truly a horror game, we're going to try and avoid as much as, as we can because it's really scary, and we don't want to scare ourselves too much, do we, kids? No, we don't. So uh, we're going to quickly try and do some sweet menuing here if we can. That's okay, it'll do. Um, so there's like, yeah, again, because of the way that they changed the text in this game for the HD version, it's just again like slight speed ups, um, but uh, it allows me to kind of like menu a lot faster if I can do like X and then I kind of like slide X to circle to try and get like a double input. Here we are. Humans are more tasty and angry and I haven't eaten it in a while. Sorry, I'm giving away the script, but what can I say? These are oh no, I love the passion for the game, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> these, they, these are unskippable cutscenes, so uh, when you run it for about five years, you kind of start to learn the cutscenes. Um, it's part and parcel. So we're going to do one, two. One, two, magic attack. Hopefully I get a magic drop. One, two, three, four. One, two, magic. Oh god, he, he actually hit me, never mind. This is not looking good. Okay, I did get magic. Good. So, is it possible to do an Eason on bosses like Osric? Um, so, yeah, fun, fun fact. Now, you'll see that I'm not going for the, uh, the, the ascent here. And the reason for that is that you cannot actually ascend bosses as a general rule. Now, there is actually a, a boss we can ISM in the game. I will show it off if you really want to see it, but it's not... Can you please stop doing horizontal strikes, mate? Whatever's safer, I would say, but I'll leave that up to you. Right. I mean, it's, it's doable. I just have to... I mean, I, I'm going to be making, like, three or four, maybe, safety saves throughout out the run for marathon purposes. Um, but um, my, the, the fight we do for the, that, that can be ISM um, is fairly safe. But uh, So I, I, I can show you. It's kind of like a... Uh, point, but it's it, it, it's a very unique ISN. Now I should talk about the series as a whole, but of course a very important moment. We have Guildenstern finally. <clears throat> Ooh, sweet, beautiful, lovely, the dripping blood. Ooh, what's this? Oh, a liver. <clears throat> What's that smell? Who's there? A human? How disappointing. <laughs> And of course, face me, demon. <laughs> Who do you think you are talking to? I haven't seen one as foolish as you since that uh, Nobunaga. Nobunaga? <laughs> I operated on and resurrected that pitiful Nobunaga after he was killed in Okihazuma. He then uh, pledged his eternal loyalty to serve us forever as our slave. There you go. So, something like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Guildenstern's English voice is quite special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it is indeed true. Now let me show you my most recent creation. Yeah, he's great. Uh, Gilt yeah, it's just quite a legendary voice, uh, uh, voice line just because it's so silly, but uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those uh, one of those voice types that really works. My downstairs neighbors are going to be upset at me. It's 3 a.m. by the way where I am. Very tiring, but it's... Uh, it's always fun to give us a chance. Okay, so, second orb, red eye on the Oni Gauntlet. Keep that in mind. Now, um, well, I, was talking, I was talking about how, by the way, Ronaldo's not a mini boss. You can just run past him. See ya. Um, got to be careful here. Hopefully you don't get the spawn. I got the spawn. Cheers, mate. Thanks. So this is kind of where we're going to see a very, very important mechanic. These blue soul absorbers 
yeah, there you go, they absorb the souls. Now, souls again are my experience, so what's very important about these guys is that these act as experience multipliers, so whenever they go into one, um, one of them, they'll basically multiply what goes in, out. Okay, it's the front one. So I want to get the front one. The one over here on the left, and at the back, okay, there we go. So yeah, I want to basically make sure that I get all the experience from all of these and they go through each individual soul um, absorber so that I can get maximum experience. So I want to have about four and a half bars after this one. Four and a half. Ah, 4.6, there we go. Okay, so um, again, safety mechanism. Just gonna grab these me this, this medicine. A medicine is full HP and uh, I don't need it, but you know. So the reason I want um, 4,000 is because uh, for leveling up magic, it's 2,000 for level 2 and 4,000 for level 3. And it's 3 and 6 for um, the swords. Now, in Onimusha 1, sword and magic are separate. You level them up separately. Now, I really, really like this. They didn't do this in the other Oni Onimusha, which is a big sad face emoji for me. Uh, I am going to actually make a safety save here as well, because this is where I can like basically screw up my first... Um, my first is then if I do screw this up. So, um, yeah, so in order to kind of progress through the game, we need to level up our magic only. Plus, magic is really, really powerful for, defeat for, for defeating demons. Now, swap to Ryzan. I'm going to Isen this guy. Let's try. We like it. So he's going to absorb. Get that Isen. Now, these guys are slowly spinning around, which means that they're going to disappear. So if I screw this up, basically, I lose all these souls. I'm just going to go off screen to let the other one spawn. There we go. And then that's three of them. Now I should be on 4,000 again. Oh, just off. Okay, cool. Um, again, I want to. I want to be on 4,000. If I'm not, that's not great, but it's okay. Now, so you can see these little like locks. Now that's um, one red, which means I need one. I need level one fire. Um, so there'll be some that require higher, like basically they will be like two nodes rather than one, which needs level two magic. So you need to level up uh, magic to progress through doors. I, some safety strats and like newer strats for like newer runners, you can definitely um, do things like increase the sword level for Enryu, the fire sword, if you really want, but you don't, don't really need to. Um, this is uh, Tokichiro Kinoshita, otherwise known as Hideyoshi Toyotomi. <laughs> Um, he, this guy's got a great, great voice as well. He's a little bit more kind of uh, god. <clears throat> I cannot believe you are here of all places. Yeah, he's a bit more kind of like... He's, he's a really, really tricky character. I am a sir servant of the Oda clan. My name is Tokichiro Kinoshita. He's very kind of like a weedly, uh, mysterious gent who is somehow working with the demons in the Oda clan with Nobunaga. Now, we see him very briefly here and there. He plays a bigger part in the wider series. Uh, so if you're interested, check out the rest of the series because it's also very good. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, the experience routing is kind of specific. I mean, again, I'm looking for that 4K to begin with, and I'm looking for another 4K now. I didn't get it. Um, I'm looking for uh, just uh, the amounts to always keep, to keep pro progressing without having to worry about my... Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't want to ever, ever get to a locked door that I can't open and I have to go back to a mirror. Now, generally, there are points that I can always hit. So, four, four and a half K after the first set of blue soul absorbers, another four K afterwards, because I've already spent four. And then I want to have 10,000 souls total after I fight the boss at the top of the um, fort. And then there'll be like another segment where I... And then there's not really any kind of like major like points that I'm looking for. So I kind of like grab level 2 thunder, 3 fire and 2 wind. And I kind of go with that for like a long chunk of the game. Uh, so there are opportunities to get backup souls for a good chunk of it. But of course that slows down the run the more you have to do. So I'm going to magic these guys to hell and back because, you know, we don't need to worry about them. Can you not do this? Okay, there we go. I'm still getting used to the control stick controls because I'm just so like uh, locked in the way of the PS2 because I, I ran the PS2 version for like three or four years um, and I've only been running this for like a year. I say a year, I mean I played it a lot when it first came out and kind of picked it up again you know, throughout this year as well, just kind of here and there. 
So you'll notice as well that sometimes there are like dudes who are like uh, trying to fight the, the, the demons. You can actually like save them and get items. Whoa, buddy, calm down. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, it does kind of have that kind of horror vibe of like there's like a load of demons waiting around corners that will like, you know, crawl from the spaces or like be on another camera angle that you can't see that will suddenly surprise you and hurt you. But uh, for now, we're going to go to a bit of a tricky segment. So we're going we're to have a bit of fun here. A nice little puzzle section. Because, again, you know, the Resident Evil team made this. And Resident Evil loves having a little bit of puzzling goodness every, every now and then. So we have a little bit of puzzling goodness here. But, uh, yeah, so, um, Ek, you picked this game up this year as well, didn't you? So, uh, what, what, what can you tell us about your kind of experience with this game so far in terms of, like, playing, playing this speed? I did, and uh, this was one of the harder games that I've done because of uh, having to master the Isen. Mm. Like, just really having to focus on that timing and the soul management, like, those are the two major things. And then uh, it took me a while to actually get a completed run because I think this game uses uh, a lot of rules that a lot of horror games will use, where if you die, the run's invalidated because of that in-game timer at the end. Mm. It's... So I would end up dying to different bosses all the time, but eventually I was able to get it done consistently. But I still had to go for the golden armor here, actually. Oh yeah, the, 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 to be fair, the, the holy armor there is like pretty solid choice. You might as well just go for it. Like it's it's one of those things that like when I was kind of like you know picking up the run and working my way through it, it's it's not hard to do. Like it's it's, it's available now. As soon as Kaede presses that left side. Um, yeah. Statue. I should mention her, by the way. Her name's Kaede. She is a Kunoichi, who is like basically um, the partner of uh, Sasa Samanosuke, and they go around and do, you know, ninja and samurai things together. Um, okay, so this, is, this is the easy one. Now, this, this is really interesting because there's loads of different versions of this screen, but you basically can, I mean, I say, it's very simple to kind of pick up and see exactly which version you're on, and then you can just... Uh, get one person to the end and that's all, all you need to do but uh, if, if you drop someone in they die and it's game over so because there are spikes down there of course classic classic room in any old Japanese castle so actually as a question to you for following up on this one <laughs> uh, so what got you into running Onimusha oh this is like I started in 2015 is the first time I picked, I picked this game up. Um, I was just, I, I play a lot of RPGs, so I'm a big RPG speedrunner, and I kind of wanted something different to play. I was just thinking, what games do I love and do I really enjoy? And I just randomly just stumbled upon um, the, the, um, a run by uh, one of the early members of the community, Josh, because I think he's pretty much like started it alongside Oblimix, so like the first two. Um, Runners to kind of get into this, and uh, I just kind of saw that. I was like, "This is look, this is really cool. I love this game." And um, I'm I'm a big Oni fan, but like Oni one in particular is my favorite. I like one and three are like my top two kind of ones. They're really really good fun. There was something about this first one that just kind of I wanted to go for it, and just yeah, I just had a look at it. I enjoyed the way it felt, and just decided to give it a go. Um, and it's so different from the rest of my wheelhouse that it kind of sticks out as kind of uh, quite a. Uh, a specific game and a, a specific way of playing as well that I just kind of always have enjoyed. But um, yeah, so that was kind of like the nice, uh, simple puzzle stuff done. That that wore that like tile puzzle was really sweet. But, uh, but yeah. I should should mention as well that when the uh, when when the PS4 version and then the Switch version and the PC version when the HD remaster came out there was a, a nice um, like kind of like influx of new runners coming to it. So like back in the day it was myself and Josh because like the main two runners and there was a, a Japanese runner by the name of Hinge who is like the god of Oni, <laughs> the man of the moment. Yeah, Hinge is uh, pretty good. I definitely want to give a special shout out to him as well. Uh, I think he has world records in all the Oni Musha games at this point. Yeah, like so I got the first ever one flat like just one hour flat in only one and then hinge about maybe th th six or seven months later got the first ever sub one and uh yeah kind of like got, got that legendary time out on ps2 um and 
Well, I, got, I, got, I got my first ever sub one on the PS4 version, but like his PB right now is 55 in game time and 59 RTA. Uh, yeah, 59 RTA. It's so like a sub one RTA, which is amazing time and super impressive. But like, there's been like a whole bunch of uh, like new people jumping in to play in these games and getting people interested in like only three as well and even only, only two runs. Only two is nuts, um, but uh, three is kind of a little bit, a little bit more like uh, a accessible, similar to, the, to this one. Two is like just an ISM first. It's nuts. Um, but uh, yeah. I mean, we've got runners like uh, Loner Hero who does a lot of the uh, kind of the moderating and kind of like set up the Discord and stuff and uh, has kind of been playing a lot of um, 1 and 3. Um, uh, there's loads more Japanese runners as well, like uh, your, I think it's Yorisiro, uh, like he, he has an amazing run as well, he also has a, has a sub 1 RTA, um, so like loads more Japanese runners jumping in, and it, it's just been a lot more growth since this game came out, so. Um, ultimate mode coming out, even Oni Spirits, so this little, like, little, like, this fun minigame thing has some more runs going for it as well. So, uh, yeah, it's been like a fun year, or well, say a fun year, yeah, about a year and a half, almost two years now. Don't get hit by him, thank you. He dead, right? Yeah, he's dead. Man, I'm gonna play this safe, I think. I'm gonna, I don't wanna kill these guys, but this is just a safety method in terms of grab, grab these souls. Ups my soul count a little bit just because it's going to be a little bit dicey. Okay, I'm going to do the newer strats. Um, so yeah, there's again, as I said, like when this version came out, a lot of new stuff happened to the run. More people coming in, more eyes on the game, trying new things out. And there's like loads of tiny optimizations that are coming out now that are super nice. So I'm going to try leveling Cohen to level 3 now, and I'm going to uh, basically beat up Marcellus on the top of the fort here. Now this is a very RNG heavy boss, because magic's the biggest way that we deal damage. So hopefully we get blue orb drops. Now we don't always get that. However, uh, we need like 3 double hit mag like fire magics to get this guy done. So let me just focus here. He's going to open up an attack. One, two. One, two, and one blue, one little blue soul, great. So hitting his shield gives you blue souls. He's very aggressive, this mister. Oh, please, mate. What, do you have to be like this? There we go, that's another two hit. Kind of like either punish him when he tries to do things um, or uh, hit him with magic, but he died, so it's fine. <laughs> it's a little bit dicey, um, but yeah, I didn't get. I, I once had a fight where I threw out a fire shot, hit him twice, got a small and a big blue orb, did it again and got another big orb, and then just immediately went into a third double hit, hit him like four times, and he died immediately. It's like so you either get a fight like that, or you get a fight like like the one you just saw. Oh well. Okay. Yeah, overall's pretty good fight. Yeah, it, it happened. I'm, yeah, I didn't like take too much damage. Didn't kind of spend too much too long dealing with it, and I got my ten thousand souls as you saw. So uh, ten thousand here, which means that I have uh, enough to get a Rashi level two. Now we're going to go to the underground, to the depths, to the basement of the fort, where we're going to need level 2 magic to get through one of the doors. Because again, the demon influence is spreading and uh, causing all these locks to appear everywhere, and we need the power of the Oni magic to get through it. So we have three, three swords and three spells. We've got quick, light, one, two, three, four combo. We've got the one, two, three, slower and Ryu combo. And then we've got this double-bladed shippu, which is has like double hit, but very, very weak, but it hits more times. And the magics work differently. You've got uh, Shiden, the lightning magic, which is a one target strike on that. I didn't use Shiden on uh, Mar Marcellus because actually it, it just hits his shield. It's a way to get rid of his shield quickly, whereas fire hits straight to him. So an important thing, thing, thing to know. Fire is kind of like a line AOE, anything in the way. It also has some, ni some nice width. You kind of hit, hit in a line, it hits anyone there. And then you've got like an AOE around you with a Rashi, which is wind magic. 
So we have all of the, all of the magics and all of the abilities that we're going to be having for the rest of the run. Uh, I do know, do know that I have arrows. Now that's going to come in handy a little bit later on. Um, but until then, we've just got our blinking gauntlet and three swords of magical justice. I dare say. So uh, between the three swords, which one is your favorite? Um, for reason, aesthetics um, or usability in game, because aesthetics. I'd say both. I'd probably say. Um, I like. Uh, um, mm, ah, mm. And Ring is kind of cool when it gets leveled up. I like. I like a Ryzan, but it has a bit of a weird kind of um, like weird spikiness to it when you level it up. So it looks better when it's like level one than it does when it's level three. Whereas Enryu gets pretty beefy when it levels up. Although there is another sword in the game that's pretty sick. I'm not going to mention that one because it's a secret. Uh, but I'd probably say. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, she she ends really good magic, um, and the combo system for that one is really really solid. So it's kind of hard to say. But um, en Enryu looks cool. But I think uh, Ryzen is probably the most useful. Overall. I serve Princess Hatsu. The, Eng the English for her is amazing as well. She just comes in and says, she's like, ah, and falls over. It's brilliant. Um, some things to note, actually, if you've played the original game, if you're either are very, very familiar with it or you it's your favourite game ever and you know it inside out, um, the Japanese voice acting did actually get a re-dub for this, um, for the the, uh, the remake, and also the soundtrack got redone because the, for for reasons they had to uh, separate themselves from the previous composer, um, and uh, so they got a brand new soundtrack done, which is very, very lovely. Um, but it's one of those ones where I kind of like people of the, who love the original will kind of be like, oh man, I miss the, the original music. But the new the new music is very lovely. Um, this one tends to go for a little bit more of like the eerie atmospheric stuff than kind of tending to go for a bit more of a mix of that eeriness, but also that kind of like um, expressive um, and almost jubilant or orchestrations that you can sometimes get from you know uh, certain Japanese developers and. And, and composers. So you may have seen that, that 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 was really quick. I haven't really talked about this, and I should. Another change that came to this game was the ability to quick change weapons by hitting the R2 button. Uh, you can basically quick swap weapons, and that is super nice. Safety orbs. Don't need those, but whatever. Which is very very handy when it comes to certain oh god certain screens like that one, which is a much faster than having to go into the menu, select the sword, say okay, leave the menu. Do the thing, open the menu, select the sword, leave the. Yeah, there you get, you get the gist. We, we. Oh, I'm gonna get hit by that. Yep. <laughs> Don't die. Um, I'm gonna heal just in case. I've never been hit by that, but that's first time for everything. Marathon luck, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. I was a little bit, uh, a little bit peaky on the movement. You need to be a little bit more on it, but um, again. Mate, please leave me alone. I'm not in interested in timeshare, mate. All right, okay, so you wanted your big jump scare, right? Deep breath. Deep breath. All right, it's coming. Oh, shit, I've just given it away. I'm running to chat. I've given it away. <laughs> it wouldn't be a horror game without one of these bad boys. Hey, it's good to have the warning, though. Oh. Jesus! They're everywhere! God. Big fan of a jump scare. Love a jump scare. When I was a kid, that was terrifying. I'm 30 years old now, so... <sighs> I am pretty sure people who are playing this game for the first try can still get them pretty decently. <laughs> yeah. Just forget you ever saw that if you're going to play this for the first time and then, you know, let me know how pleasantly <laughs> surprised you were by the jump scare. <laughs> Okay, so that's the underground done. <laughs> um, so we're going to meet up with our good friend, Kinoshita-san. Hello. Um, he's going to consistently try and wheedle his way in. Are you sure you don't want, want to join our clan? Please stop talking. Your voice is exquisite agony to me. Prepare for dark ceremony. Okay, so they have something going on. So you may, maybe you were paying attention to the cutscenes whilst I was talking your ear off during this cutscene. Um, but Tokichiro Kinoshita was talking about how what they were going to do is they were going to sacrifice Princess Yuki and uh, fill her skull with her blood. And then Lord Nobunaga will drink the blood of Princess Yuki from her skull and gain ultimate demonic power. 
but they can't have any meddling samurai. I'm sure by now, Kaede is in trouble. And again, in true fashion, like any old uh, Resident Evil style game, we do have assistant and like partner character sections. Now, Kaede is super cool. She's got loads of different skills. She plays very, very differently. Um, I've got to hurt. Samanosuke? A couple of other things as well. Samanosuke, I, um, his name is Samanosuke Akechi. He's kind of like a not real nephew of uh, an actual historical figure, Mitsuhide Akechi, which if you know anything about um, kind of this era of Japan, the kind of like pre-Edo um, period, um, that Mitsuhide Akechi was a samurai who originally was in the uh, um, kind of like service of Lord Nobunaga. Things change. Read it up, it's very interesting history. Um, so yeah, they kind of wanted to create like a little fictional but not interesting character. And he's uh, kind of voice acted by and also the facial design, design <laughs> the facial inspiration um, inspired from uh, by a person called Takeshi Kaneshiro, who's a well-known Japanese actor. And uh, yeah, so one thing you may have noticed is just how good like the character models are. They remember, this game came out in 2001 on the PS2. Speaking of which, speaking of legends and heroes, it's my boy Dying Guy. Let's hear it for Dying Guy. Let's get some claps in chat because this is Dying Guy. Monsters from West Prison. My boy Dying Guy. I give a clap for that. Absolutely, absolutely. A hero in his own right. He lived as he, oh, he died as he lived, dying. What a beast. So, this is the interesting thing about Kaede. She's got a few, a, a few skills. Now, because she's a ninja, okay, she can do ninja flips, but I'm not gonna do one. Not, not, not just yet, anyway, but I will do flips. She can do flips, she can do back flips. Um, and she's got her own special, unique isen, which I'm not gonna do just yet. Now, uh, you can't access this place originally because you can't get in through the door because it's locked. Now, Kaede has, like, shinobi key, or like, shinobi, um, uh, what are they called? I guess Shinobi keys. Yeah, she's got like uh, basically things that go uh, lock picks that allow her to uh, pick locks. There's the flip, and there's a one shot. <laughs> nice little uh, one shot there. Now she's also got kunai because she is an ninja. Oh my word, that was godlike. That was actually godlike. Did you see that? Sorry, that was perfect timing. Like I, I've been trying to get that 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 timing right all day, um, and that's where you throw the kunai and the other archer kills the first archer with his arrow before you actually hit it, and the kunai goes through the first one in, into the second one. It's super nice when you get it. Uh, 572. I'm going to open a few of these. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, uh, a lot of people in chat are giving you the uh, the clapping for dying guy. Good, good. There's a lot of uh, hype for dying guy. Sweet. Uh, I, I, I dubbed him Steve Yamamoto, uh, I believe, sort of three years ago. Um, and uh, he, he's always been in my heart ever since. <laughs> Gotta love dying guy. Control stick movement. D-pad movement. We're going to go back to some more. Control stick movement. D-pad movement. you got to basically just use both at the same time kind of thing because uh, both types of movement are handy at different points. This is all D-pad. This is all D-pad. This is D-pad. I mean, how handy was Dying Guy, though? Because without Dying Guy, we wouldn't have got the red key. We couldn't get back here. He's truly the most important character of the game when you think about oh, yeah. it. Kylie really couldn't do what, what she does without without dying guy. Oh god, that's great movement. Bowie, that is fantastic movement. It's 3 a.m. Cut me some slack, alright? <laughs> <laughs> so this is where some, some differences here are. This is a very laggy screen to load uh, the, the camera changes because of the, how much lighting effects and stuff like that are kind of on this screen. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And on PS2, this chunks. <laughs> the PS2 like coughs and splutters through through this. Bless its heart, it tries. Um, but the PS4, oh, bosh, straight through. We've got the gold plate, we've got the silver plate, everything we need to succeed. Okay, D-pad, D-pad, all the D-pad right here. I'm going to go back to control stick. Look at this free movement, Wee! Never felt so free. I was, uh, I was playing this a bit earlier and uh, someone was saying to me like, ah, oh, you know, 
I, 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 was, I was giving giving it, it, it a go, but I, all I had, had heard about was clunky controls, and it's like, I hope there are more people like me who are, you know, big advocates for tank controls, because they make so much, lo so much, lo so much, excuse me, logical sense. Press forward to go forward, and press left and right to strafe. Makes sense, I think. That's why. Yeah, I a nice feel, especially in uh, these types of games. Hmm. Yeah, because like when, when you change camera angle and you're using control stick, that's when you start going all over the place. Because again, you're moving in the direction that you that 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 it would be on that camera screen. So when it kind of like swaps to like the opposite direction, you end up just turning around. Uh, okay, one, one, two, one, two. Now, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with Kaede because now she's all this time she's had a crappy old regular knife, but now she's got the sacred knife. And this sacred knife is a, a knife that is specialized at killing Genma demons. Which we're gonna make use of immediately. I'm gonna get our first boss fight with Kaede. And uh, this is where I'm gonna do, hopefully, if I can, the hardest trick in the game. So we found where Princess Yuki is being held again at the basement. In a. In like a, a little house, a little shack to the side of the fort. We is lo lovely Princess Yuki. You are Kaede. Um, so, you may have seen it at the beginning of the game, Samanosuke is sending, press a button, evade counter, immediate one shot. So you may have seen me earlier as well with Kaede do a flip over a skeleton demon and then slice him. That's her Isen. You have to evade by doing the flip in front, like aggressively flip over them, then when they're when, when when behind them get the finish. I'm about to do a boss with the cloaked demon. Now this fight, you can Isen the cloaked demon. However, it is like there's two particular inputs that require timing as well as angle and positioning. It's all kinds of things, as well as whatever move he uses. I believe you can do it on most moves, but there are some, the, the bigger cooldown a move has that he uses, the more time you have to, ex to execute the Isen. So it's very important. I'm gonna give it a go. If I do it first time, I'm a god. If I don't, I am not a god. There we go. Those are the rules. Oh, um, the only one that really ups uh, Guildenstern is my boy Gogan Dantes, the finest demon swordsman. Okay, here we go. I have to focus now, so let's get this right. Hit him down so he jumps up, and then hopefully he's going to attack me. I'm going to jump and get the thingy. No, he evaded. Of course he did. Please, mate. Be kind. Hello? I need to just heal again. This is... Please, dude. Okay, I just have to fight him because he's going to be mean today. Stop doing the stab, Kaede, and do the jump. Ah, I didn't get it. Uh, I was a bit, a bit too close, I feel. In all fairness, it is the hardest trick in the yeah, game. Yeah, it's really hard. Like, I mean, I mean, Hinge was saying, Hinge again, the, uh, the record holder, saying that at best you'll have a 70% chance of getting it. I mean, I'm slowly winning the fight anyway, but uh, the way it works is that, yeah, she, she kind of like like hits him in, in the knees and knocks him down, and then, yeah, she just like stabs him in, in, in the back of the neck. Oh man, this is not ideal. Oh well, we didn't get it. Uh, but yeah, it's really, really hard. I, there, was one, there was one that I really should have got, but I think timing-wise it was a bit, bit iffy. But, uh, this is why we pick up extras in a marathon run. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, it's not so bad with uh, Samonosuke doing his sense on that guy because again, it's just like last minute. But hers is the flip needs to be timed right, and then the stab needs to be timed right. The amount of times that I've got it, but the angle's been off, so she goes in to do the action and moves to him, but doesn't actually activate it, which is kind of infuriating. I, lo I lost a run to that um, earlier today, and that was. That was a moment. Okay, let me grab this. I'm gonna go one, two to fire. Good. Okay, so Stylado is our next boss. After being captured and sent to the uh, again the underground underneath the fort. Um, earlier, you may have seen that um, Samonosuke gut punched Kaede. Well, that wasn't Samonosuke. That was this guy. 
with the very creepy hello eyes. Okay, so this is very important to do a little turn to the left and then unleash. And then magic. And then magic. And then bait. There we go. One, two. Okay, bait again. Bait. Bait. Oh wait, okay, got him. Genius. Nice. Not 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 the best, but yeah. Fire, double wind, double thunder. You want to kind of like use the R1 button. So like, I haven't really talked about it too much, but the R1 button acts as like a lock-on, and you'll lock onto a target. And then when you do that, rather than tank controls, you'll go into strafe mode, where you'll kind of like press left and right, and you'll go around people, back and forward, and you'll like dash back and forward. Nice and easy. Um, but yeah, you kind of want to use the strafing technique to kind of like edge forward, then like bait him to attack, then back out, and then immediately counter with magic. Uh, it's very, very tough timing because he's got good range and he kind of attacks pretty hard, does Stylado. So um, we'll get the evil plate and we'll get a very big ladder in a very small box. Don't ask. I don't know. It falls. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was saying that as well. Yeah, I, was like, I think uh, Lo uh, Lonely Hero, as I was saying earlier, one of the newer runners, he was kind of like, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those like extendable ones, you know? You know how you have like fire escape ladders that kind of slide down. Exactly. Now I, I feel like we haven't been enough of like horror goodness, so I'm gonna actually let this cutscene play for a little bit, so we can get a little bit of horror going, because we are at speed runs from the crypt right now, so we'll have a little bit of horror. Shall we? We've got Hecuba. Oh, hello, PG-13. Keep it PG, love. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Oh my god, what are you doing? It turns out she's actually a demon. Crikey. There you go. What a slammer. Resolute in the, uh, in the face of danger. And there lies the demon realm. So what's trying to happen is the demons are trying to open the gate between the demon realm and the human realm and take over the human realm. Thank you very much for clarifying that for us. Heck you but man. Not ideal. And we'll skip that from there. There you go. A little bit of horror for you. Beautiful. It's very fitting. Mm. Now, how will Samonosuke oh, save you, Maru? No chance. She comes up. Kurewa? It's a stone. Okay, so again, we're going to separate. I love how it's always like, let's separate, and then we go the exact same direction. Earlier in the run, uh, there was like a cutscene where Yumimari is running away, and, she, and then Samonosuke says, you go after the boy, and I'll go and find Princess Yuki. They, and then both Kaede and, and Samonosuke run the exact same direction. Brilliant. I'm going to make a quick safety save, because I've been... Yeah, mate, all right. I don't want to save here, but... Don't, don't you want to go to the Dark Realm? There's no guarantee you will live. But if you do, great awards, rewards await you. Alright, mate. Again, I'm, uh, we're not going to the dark realm. <laughs> Don't want to accidentally say yes there. This is just a marathon safety save, uh, just to... Um, because, as uh, they say, this is, for some reason I've been cocking up a very particular Isen, and it if I was to die there, that's like 28 minutes of progress lost. So This game is pretty unforgiving, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know why, but this screen is somehow really hard in this version. Get out of the way, bro. Thank you, I was going to say. Right, okay, so this is semi-new, I'm going to say. Not completely new, but semi-new. Great. Let's cock up the thing again. No, let's cock it up again for some reason. Give me horizontal. So 
So if I remember right, uh, you mentioned the Dark Realm. I think a lot of runners to practice actually use the Dark Realm to learn all the Esens, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a good place to do it. Excuse me, mate. Do you want to not? Bloody Nora. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a pretty solid place to learn it, because like, the whole point of the Dark Realm is that you get access... You, it's like 20 floors long, um, deep rather, and uh, you have access to like every single enemy in the game is in there. Uh, so you have a chance to, you know, practice its ends on every single monster in the game. So that's pretty helpful. Gentlemen. Gonna re restore my uh, my MP there. So again, the reason I did that then as well is normally what I used to do is I used to go and do this section here, then go back and do the get those souls on the way through. Um, but what that forces me to do, it forces me to kill. There's um, I'm gonna be fighting four um, Barra Bazoos, um, and they are really annoying. But now I don't need to kill four. There's three yellow ones, one big red one. Red one takes about 17,000 years to kill, and obviously we don't have 17,000 years because it's a speed run. So we're just going to unleash hell on these lads, kill the two two yellow ones, and get out of here. He's going to hit me. Please don't hit me. Ow. Uh, yeah, so that basically speeds up that screen so you don't have to kill anything else, and that's kind of helpful. Shoutouts. I'm gonna grab this actually. This is health. Playing it super safe today. But that is all the souls I need in the game. So that gives me access to um, Arashi level three. Why am, I, why am I mashing that? Arashi level three, and then I'm gonna get 30 fire arrows as well. So you only need 17,000 souls to get through the entire game in terms of what the strats we do. If you wanna have a few more, you can get like a, a little over 20,000. It's a bit slower because there's a cutscene when you get 20,000, but yeah. Uh, and let's... Uh, I'm going to save again, just to be sure. You never know if I'm going to royally cock up again. Because, you know. And better be safe than sorry for these. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, uh, now that I've got everything, I've got, like, honestly, all of my souls. I don't, I would, don't need to go and do the soul farming on the way back. Um, and again, as I say, I don't need to fight the Red Barabazoo, which is super helpful, because... It, it's only two magic casts to kill the yellow ones. Any level two magic, you know, one fire, one wind, or like two fire, or whatever. The Barabazoo, the red one, takes like another four casts, which is just magic I can't be, can't be asked to, uh, to deal with. Um, so there we go. So yeah, we went, we went over there to grab the decorated sword. So you come this way, and we got uh, Gary Yamamoto, Steve's brother, Who's definitely got this under control? See ya, buddy. You got this, man. He'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> He's absolutely fine. He's Gary. We need a clap for Gary. Yeah. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing that's going to go wrong there. Do not worry. The Yamamoto's are, are a, uh, a fastidious group. <laughs> Aww. Don't mean to be mean to the, to the Yamamoto's, but... Okay, so this is going to tell us about the uh, the great bow and the great arrow that can pierce even demonic shields, which pretty much gives away what we need to do. Go and grab a big bow, go and grab a big arrow, and we can get through the shield and get to that, that uh, door to the demon world, which is where we need to get to, because behind the door to the demon realm we will find Princess Yuki and uh, Yumamaru. So let's keep on running. Now that little purple thing on the left, on the right rather, uh, that was for souls. You can grab those, grab those if you like. Um, that's a nice little backup if you do like run out of soul or like don't have enough souls at this point. But uh, I've got enough, so Ooh, uh, we're we're all good, which is nice. Okay, let's grab this. We're gonna go three, six. use our magic jewels. We don't need to use anything but magic jewels. Uh, we don't need power jewels because we don't really expect to die, but, you know, who knows? I've died before. I'll likely die again. 
Okay, so that's this section, and we're going to be jumping into Kaede's second section. Samonosuke grabs the bow, Kaede will grab the arrow. And then we get kind of to the, the crux of the run, and funnily enough, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been one of those days where the boss that I have to do, deal with next has been really tricky today. So hopefully I don't make a fool of myself. If I cock it up, I'm sorry. Um, Would you say the boss really bugs you? Everybody gets one. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. I didn't do the other one yet. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, no worries. We, we yeah. talked about a different one earlier. Yeah. I haven't done like, that one yet. If I, had, if I had smashed the Cloak Demon fight with Kaede, then it would have been perfect timing. But, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't give that to you. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> we might as well see if it comes up. We'll see. We'll see. There's still time. We'll see if I get the good uh, the good fortune brass and good Marcella. We'll see. All right. We got Kaede first of all. So she's going to do some ninja things like flips. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Do, do a flip. Do a flip. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't do that. Do a flip. Oh, no. This is not ideal. She does. Not been doing the flips today. I might need to heal again. This is really not ideal. We've got two medicines, so we're good. I'm timing this just incorrectly. Thank you. There we go. Ninja flips. If in doubt, okay. If you're worried, if 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 you're ever worried about how things are going, it's like ah, oh, this you know the, I I have a presentation I have to do at work, or you know I've got to go and you know defend my PhD thesis. If you feel it's not going well, just do a flip. I can guarantee you that if you do a flip, it's gonna be alright. Look, look, look. Everything's better already. I had a friend once try and tell me that flips weren't ne weren't necessary, and I just <laughs> <laughs> minus one friend. Uh, <laughs> not true. I just didn't speak to them for a bit. Um, we'll avoid all these guys super sweetly, and we're going to stick to the left hand side, close to this wall, so that we only get knocked back by one arrow, which means that we don't get knocked back as far. And we're going to do our last puzzle box. These puzzle boxes are kind of fun to remember, I guess. Um, one, two, one, one, two, one, two. Hell yeah. There we go. And then this, the, these guys here are called, here, here are called spiders. They're like, you know, they're black garbed versions of uh, the guys we fight at the very beginning. They're really annoying and the ascent timing on those are nuts. So let's not worry about that. You can see I tend to like avoid a lot, a lot of enemies. I, I could go like, you know, super ham and just go around ascending everything, um, but Whilst that would be really cool, and I would look like a bit of a baller shot caller, um, I'd rather just stick to speed, because <laughs> it's kind of my job. So uh, uh, Right now I want to take a, a question from the chat, since we're talking about all the flips. Uh, mm -hmm. They're asking, will a cartwheel work in replacement with flip? Uh, you, you know what? Any kind of gymnastic um, prowess is really appreciated. So... Um, Obviously, it's one of those things. If you can go, if you can do a flip, I'd always, I'd always opt for the flip. But if it's one of those things where you're like, I haven't got the space, um, you know, I'm not as limber as I should be. A cartwheel is more, more than, than, than fan, fantastic, and you should never be ashamed of replacing a flip with a cartwheel. There we go. By the way, this is a beautiful, cut, uh, a beautiful static here. Lovely. A pair of those are stunning statics. Um, oh, just gorgeous. Okay, so this is the Kaede section. I have my splits up, but I'm not doing a very good job of keeping up, up to date with them, so... <laughs> it's fine. Um, okay. Samanosuke! But that's the last we'll see of Kaede in terms of playing her. I am sorry, we only get the one boss for her. But you are meant to, meant to kill things and be a bit more, you know, cool. And use the, you use your kunai, do your flips and stuff like that. Um, but uh, instead, she's going to go for the explosive option. Hell yeah! Right, okay. I do need do need to focus here. This boss fight is very difficult. We used to have a simpler way of doing this, but I'm going to go for the uh, the uh, 
I'm, I'm going to do it X. Sorry, I'm going to go for the Prony Musha Strass. Um, and uh, I'm going to... <laughs> um, I picked up a, up a Soul Absorber earlier. This is a very important item. Now, we used to use it for the Hecuba fight, but I pushed it over to the final boss fight because it makes the final boss faster, and you can still get a pretty fast Hecuba without it. Um, so I'm going to hope that I get a magic drop. Now, this is why I saved at the end of Kaede 2, because I can die to this fight very easily. If I do, I will cry. Um, but yeah. This is Hecuba, yeah. and the fight is, is difficult. Magic is a key part of this, and this is also why you get long range weapons a bow and a gun. Um, but we're not, we didn't pick up the flint, the, the flintlock, or uh, the Tane Gashima, I think they're called in Japanese. We're gonna go for long range. Um, what I love about her voice effect is it sounds as if she's like speaking into a fan. You know, when the, a, spa, a fan's going and you speak into it, it does the whole like, thing. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Consume that human over there at once. Well, I'm going to use level 3 wind. I'm going to swap to lightning, and I'm going to lightning you. And then I'm going to swap back to wind, and I'm going to use wind again. And hopefully, hopefully, there's a magic drop in here. If there's not, we get the bad fight. We get the bad fight. Okay, great. Please, mate. Oh, come on, buddy. <sighs> They're really trying it, aren't they? They are uh, not being kind to them. I'm going to heal just in case, because this is scary. Really. <laughs> Please. When the, when, when the babies start spawning, this fight gets really dicey. And, uh, yeah. Can you die, love? Why are you not dead? To be fair, I didn't use an extra piece of magic because I only had two magic casts. <laughs> oh, wow. I just saw that. I <laughs> got a magic drop at the end. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, we lost a lot of time there. That's not good. Um, oh hey, you got the fight done yeah, and yeah. it all worked out. <sighs> you want that magic drop at the start because having a third round of wind and thunder like cuts off like four arrows or like five arrows from the kill. <sighs> but that's my... I don't. I, I wanted to wait until I did it to make sure, but I've been running this game today in preparation. I was running it yesterday as well in prep for today, but today I was running this game for about six hours. Didn't get past Hecuba once, so... <laughs> That's really lucky. Oh man, tough fight, it really is. Oh, so, uh, that being said as well, I, I was going to ask during the fight, but I figured I'd wait till afterward given it's a stressful fight. Um, mm -hmm. Which is the hardest boss in the game? Hecuba. Um, I, yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> the hardest trick is the um, Cloak Demon Isen with Kaede, but the hardest right. fight is that one. Um, because the thing is, like, other ones, if they don't, if the RNG of, like, m blue orbs doesn't go in your favor, you can still easily play around it. But you have a very specific option for dealing with Hecuba. And it's like, you're having to deal with the baby she spawns and all that kind of stuff. And. Uh, you only have 30 fire arrows. You want to use only 15 on Hecuba, so you have 15 left for the Marcellus 2 fight. Um, which is the next boss fight. Spoilers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight Marcellus again. Um, I'll mention but, uh, as well, given the, um, you asked earlier, uh, like, oh, when I was luring this run, what were some of the hardest parts? Definitely Hecuba. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned I died a lot while running this game, and we go all the way back to the beginning, because the lack of saves, Hecuba. Yeah. The uh, I remember when I did, did, did this run uh, three years ago, um, we had again I had different strats. I used a soul absorber on her, which actually is really helpful because it helps you. You basically stand in the middle of the soul absorber, and you one shot all of the little babies she spawns. So whenever they whenever they come in, just absorb souls and they die. So you don't have to worry about them stopping you from fighting her. So you just stand in the corner. Whenever they whenever they they come near, just take them out, um, and off we go. So I am going to. Uh, 
you know what, I'll, I should be fine. <laughs> I should be fine. I'm good enough at this fight. This is the Marcellus fight. Um, now, I will... As I said, I will try and show you the Isen. I sh I'll, I'll get health from de de dealing the first, like... He has two phases. So Marcellus is the name of the guy that we fought at the top of the fort, who had the sword and shield, that I was trying to get, like, double hits of fire on. Um, I'm going to fight him again. He's going to be... easier, somewhat harder as well, but it depends on how you kind of approach it. Also, uh, could we just appreciate how cool the great arrow into the oh. eye is? Oh yeah, it's kind of like that, you know, whole like that Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves thing, you know, when you know, with the, the one with um, Christian Slater and Kevin Costner, and he does the whole like, you know, that, like, like the slow motion burning arrow, and it does like the multiple angles. I just have yep. like Brian Adams in my ear. everything I do, <laughs> do it for you. Bosh, yeah, great. <laughs> I don't know, I just loved it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, like the spinning like, animation it's as a it good goes shot. through and breaks it. Oh yeah, crack shot. Yeah, and we have Guildenstern again, my, my boy. You pathetic human worm. Impressive you come this far, but ultimately futile since your journey ends here. Only demons can enter. You. Why don't you go back to playing with your worthless little toys? <laughs> what did you say? How dare you, a mere human, mock me? Fine then. It's time for you, you to face my greatest creation. I can't go as loud as I need to do for this next line because it's very late at night. Probably going to get a message in the morning being like, can you shut up at 3 a.m.? Okay, this is Marcellus. Now, we have two shots of fire three. This will break him past his first phase, and then it goes into the phase that I can hiss him. So I need to get these first two casts off. There's one. There's two. Okay, let's get those orbs so I have a lot of health. I'm gonna try, I'll show, try and show you the Isen. There it is. <laughs> First try. Um, so that Isen, as I need to, um, essentially what needs to happen is if you have enough distance between you, he'll do like this big dashing attack, and it's the only attack that you can Isen by doing a Hajiki like that. Oh my god, I'm such a legend. Great job. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, a pretty in, 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 a cool tech, and it you have to it, it only works as Hajiki. You have to do the guard is, and you can't just like guard evade. It has to work, work like that. It's uh, very important. Now, the idea of this boss is that he has like three, two phases, but like two mini phases in the last bit here, where he will get stunned, and like um, you can see him being flinched every time I, I hit him. He'll go into a phase where he doesn't get stunned anymore. At that point, I will use magic. Uh, but if you, yeah, you can see I can like lock him into a corner. Okay, here we go. He should be dead now. Oh no, one more. There we go. Good fight. That was a gold. Huh? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's a really good fight, actually. Great job. That was a really good I fight. should mention uh, as well, there is a, a lot of compliments both on your voice and just you being a runner in general in chat. So. Oh. Good job. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad everyone's in, enjoying it. It's, uh, it's a very, very, um, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite games kind of on the PS2 and it's kind of nice to kind of share these kinds of games with people and I'm glad to hear that, that everyone's enjoying it. Oh, yeah, this is a game I, uh, I have a deep appreciation for and I'm very happy that you're able to showcase it. Oh, thank you. And, I mean, thank uh, you I very much for know... asking me as well, actually. I do appreciate yeah. that. Speaking kind. of which, I do know uh, we are approaching near the end of the run. Yes, this is going to kind of now. take a moment. Uh, do you have any shout outs you want to give out or anything like that? Uh, on my end, uh, probably to the only Mushu community that has been growing, as I said, uh, Lone Hero has been doing a great job of kind of keeping the uh, community alive and keeping Oni runs alive by doing more than just one, because right now I've only been doing one. I tried to learn two, but I kind of put it off for now. Uh, Hinge uh, from the Japanese community, I want to give a shout out, out to him because he was kind of like, um, his him kind of getting into the game kind of invigorated me to get back into it and kind of push myself further. Um, Josh Kuz for the original uh, video to help, help me learn. Um, outside of the Oni community, uh, my 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 community and my friends and uh, like the Moon Bros as well, kind of a team that I run in, um, all lovely people, and uh, yeah, everyone who's kind of like been part of the speedrun journey, uh, and everyone, of course to, to GDQ for giving people a chance to kind of do these events at Popfixes, and to you Ek, for inviting me. So thank you. Oh, it's great having you. And then uh, I know we're approaching the final boss mm -hmm. right now. I'll let you have that in one moment. But really quick, where can we find you on Twitch? 
on Twitch. Ah, well, if you go to twitch.tv, which is a good start to find me on Twitch, uh, forward slash Bowie the Hero. So B O W I E T H E H E R O. Um, All right, find that chat if, for anyone wants to find it. If anyone knows the reference, the game reference I'm making, you are a bit of a legend. And uh, that's cool, because it's a very good game. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Alright. So this is our final boss as well, and this is why we kept the Soul Absorber. I want to have as ma max magic as possible. So it's two parts. You have to. You can't deal damage to him by hitting his tail. Um, you have to hit his uh, head. Um, and in order to hit his head, we need to hit his tail enough to bring his head down. We basically weaken him, and he um, gets a bit angry at us. So we need to play this a little bit safe. And the first knockdown, I tend to do full sword, and then I'll get a little bit magic here. So here we go. One, two, magic on the head, because that's how you want to deal the damage. Now I'm going to swap to wind, because he will try to attack me, and I don't want him to. Stop getting hit, boy. I'm going to heal just in case. Because I do my magic right in. There we go. That's all. Not a begin to tell you how many times this boss fight took me casually. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's actually a very, very, very tricky fight. There's another lightning here. Bring him down. Ah, no, no. He can sometimes drop magic, but if he does it, okay, he does. That's nice. That's handy. That's very really nice. Getting that final hit is like a bigger hit, so it actually um, does a little bit more damage if you land that one. Okay, we're low on we're low on MP, so now I'm going to swap to the Soul Absorber. As I said, we're going to use that, and we're going to get all of our magic back. And then we're going to go straight back into the combos because that's where we use the Soul Absorber. Mm. Mm. Then again, okay, that wasn't ideal, but that's okay. Okay, we've got a couple more casts in us. Should be okay. So time's coming up very, very shortly uh, on the last hit, and I will call that up. Um, he's going to fire. Come on, man. There we go. Time. Wonderful job. I got the lab. Thank you very much. Oh god, it's a little bit scary sometimes because like there are moves that if he just kind of like catches you out, you can die. Um, this is a very graphic scene, by the way, so I'm not sure if you want to watch a little bit of this. Go for it, you're a lot. It's more than fine. You Hell heard yeah. it. Okay, I know this so, one's really cool. Yeah, you're, so, you're more than yeah. fine. GDQ 2017, I wasn't allowed to watch this, and I really wanted to. It was like it was like 8 a.m. Uh, local time. So, yeah, uh, people were we're, up, but we didn't want to we're later. Anyway. We're a horror show. We have a bit more leeway on what we can show. <laughs> like, we still have rules to keep in mind, but I know this will be fine. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so this is uh, th this is an amazing part of the game. And I think it's very important to note that they made a remake of this game called Genma Onimusha for the original Xbox, and they gave Samanosuke the power to transform. I didn't like the, that they gave it to him early, because this is how it was possible in the first place. Samuelsky is about to die from Fort and Brass, he crushes him. And at the moment of his, of his dying, his, his, the blood went into the Oni Gauntlet and unleashed the power of the Oni within him. Boom! My boy is going very aggressive. He blows up Fort and Brass's hand and becomes an absolute chunker. Oh, hell yeah. His, his skin becomes armor. Oh, so sick. And, Seeing uh, this after that fight is so rewarding. Yeah, yeah, it's like you win this fight. You are not going to win, my friend. You might be a demon, but... Speed runs from the throat. <laughs> Family friendly. Bosh. But watch his arm. Look at his arm. Oh, oh it's just... 
and the power of the only subsides as the victory is had. And what is left of Samonosuke in the demon realm? Because uh, obviously Kaede, um, Princess Yuki, and Yumamaru escaped. But Samonosuke is left within the demon realm with no means of escape. And in the reflection of the eye of Fort and Brass, Nobunaga Oda for a final showdown. And that, my friends, is only Mushu Awards. Thank you very much for watching. It's a great run, I really enjoy it. Um, it's got about 15 minutes of cutscenes in it, of course, but like, it is one of those ones which is, uh, it's a really, really fun one to run. And the, the, the cutscenes give you a few breaks. I think it was like a 104. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty that, good. Uh, RTA looks like it was a uh, 108.30 for the real time, 102 in game time. That's a really good run. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much. So, so much. Yeah, it's uh, as, as, as I say, it's been fun to run it and learn it over the years and optimize it slowly. And uh, as I said, the community has been uh, growing quite a bit, and it's 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 fascinating to see it, you know, become what it is now. Um, and yeah, I mean, to run it obviously once at GDQ 2017, SGDQ 2017, and then to come back and run it again uh, on the HD version. Uh, yeah, this is, is is available on Switch, PS4, and Steam your console or your platform of choice. Um, I'd recommend it. It's a really good, good casual play. And this is this is only the any percent. Uh, the, you might notice that the second word there says fluorite, and there's like 20 spaces. So there's like loads of like hidden items and tricks and things you can find, um, and loads of challenges with the demon realm, 20 floors of madness, which is very, very tricky. I'm not even like, that. that that's not me just saying that. It is tough. Um, I use it to practice its ends, and I've, you know, failed it many times. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Onimusha Warlords, it's part of four games, and there's actually five games, because there's Onimusha 1, 2, and 3, all PS2 games like this, Dawn of Dreams, which is kind of more action-y than this, and then Oni Onimusha Tactics, which was a handheld, it was on the Game Boy Advance, it's a tactics game on the Game Boy Advance, so an interesting series um, with a nice little spin on the horror genre and the action genre kind of melded in, in, into one. So once again, thank you very much to Ek and to GDQ for having me. I hope you've enjoyed this first run of Speedruns from the Crypt. And now I will return it to our, wonder, our wondrous host to take you through the rest of the evening. Fare thee well. Well, I thank you once again for being here. It was great having you. Uh, once again, if you uh, have not checked them out yet, Bowie the Hero can be found at twitch.tv slash Bowie the Hero. I linked it a few times in chat. I can link it again. But uh, right now, we are going to cut over to a quick ad break while we set up the next run, which will be Ill Bleed. So we'll talk more about that in a moment. We'll have our little, we'll sit down and talk. But uh, for now, uh, if you haven't enjoyed games in a quick so far, uh, feel free to, uh, you, you know, just support the stream how you can. Uh, any kind of uh, subs and bits are always appreciated for the stream. Uh, it's thanks to viewers like you at home who do let the Hoppick show keep running. Uh, right now, we're going to throw it over to a quick ad break. We'll talk a little bit more in this fashion, but uh, for now, uh, we'll be right back with Ill Bleed. Welcome back, everyone, to Speedruns from the Crypt. So I know we have the one, but I'll say uh, Bowie was a real prony Musha in that last run. Uh, we made our way through feudal Japan, uh, slaying the demons and ultimately taking down the demon lord, Fordenbras. Uh, now we're going to be a little bit more fun, let's say. We're entering a very different realm of horror. Our next game is going to be featuring a killer amusement park with some killer rides. A real thriller, if you would. Our next game is going to be Ill Bleed, which will require the use of special goggles in order to see the exact designs of the park. Uh, our hero this time will be punchy as he takes us through this killer amusement park. It's definitely going to be a unique game that there's not many like it, and it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what it is without seeing it. So, anyway, Punchy, take it away. Hello, hello, hello everyone. everyone. I'm, I'm Punchy, Punchy, and, and uh, this, this is Ill a Dreamcast exclusive horror game. game. And, and like, like I said, said, this, this game, game is unlike, unlike anything, anything else. I'm actually going to talk really, really fast, fast to start, start in order to get, get everyone, everyone on the same page of how Ill Bleed even works. Because it's... People have asked me what genre is Bleed, and I go, uh... Uh, I struggle to come up with that. Right, okay.
all good. First thing I'm going to do is buy some items. <laughs> Apparently, there's a bad okay. audio problem. All good. Uh, let's see. Should, should I restart? <laughs> should I restart? Uh, let's see with the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No worries. Uh, do I have to do the the whole speech again? <laughs> or if I restart it, yeah, feel free. <laughs> Okay, uh, now you can take it away, Punchy. Are you okay. all good now? I'm, I'm gonna make sure. Am I good now? Am I? I'm talking. I'm not like echoing. Is there is there echo? Okay. Is it's cavern? <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> in fairness, I want to mention this is very fitting for Old Bleed in the type of game that it is. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Punchy. This is Old Bleed. I'm gonna talk really fast at the start because this game it doesn't have a genre. I don't know what genre this game is. Horror, I guess. But that's it, right? Count of three. Three, two, one, go. So this is Illbleed, Dreamcast exclusive survival horror question mark third person trap detection game. Look at this interface. Look at this interface. Ridiculous. There's like four bars, there's a bunch of numbers, there's a blue brain in the corner. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy some items, specifically some medical gores, because in a game called Illbleed, uh, shockingly, the biggest danger is bleeding to death. There isn't the blood gauge isn't on the screen at the moment because I haven't taken any damage, but it will be eventually. Okay, so Illbleed is the closest genre I could call Illbleed is like third person trap detection game because we need to scout various traps in order to safely advance through all of the spooky amusement park Illbleed's rides that try and literally kill you. Uh, and the way we do that is every single stage has three sets of traps. That one is unavoidable, but that's what they're like. You get too close, you get bumped by that. Despite the crazy amount of blood that just gushed from Erico, I took actually no damage. And uh, the theme of this hotfix is finding a tool that can help us. And the tool in this game is the horror monitor, which is hidden invisibly at the start of every level. And if you don't pick it up, you have no defense against various traps. I, again, I, I reiterate, invisible. It's very easy to walk past it. So I tag a trap by going into first person mode. Uh, and then pressing A, that expends some adrenaline, which is the blue brain in the bottom left. That is not infinite. Uh, so I gotta be circumspect about that. But I need to now discern what pattern of traps I'm on. There are three patterns per stage. Uh, it's not the light bulb, which means it has to be the door. The smell door, the door where the smell sense will spike. Is there another trap? Yes, which means I'm on pattern B. Uh, right. Pattern B, pattern B, pattern B, pattern B. So essentially, yeah. each one of these levels is going to have these uh, patterns as you go through them, right? Yes. So I avoided a light bulb there because it's on the right side here. I don't remember if this pattern has the window scare or not. Tag it to be safe, because if I get hit, I die. No, I'm good. You body scare? You body scaring? We're body scaring. Okay. See, as long as I tag these traps, I don't take any damage from them. And the, the scariest level in the game is the first one, because the first level... Oh. Oops, got hit by the shower. That doesn't do damage, I think. No, that just scares me. Whatever. I'm cool. Yeah, so traps early on in this level deal fairly high damage, which uh, I want to avoid that because early on you don't have a lot of resources to heal to heal damage. So I want to be I want to be like tight with this. Later stages I can I can make more mistakes. The first stage I, I'm scared because <laughs> if I die, it's one of those games that boots you to the main menu. So the story of the first stage is that uh, a father and his son, who liked playing baseball, uh, lived and managed a hotel. Uh, and then the hotel burned down and killed the son. The son's name is Jimmy. This is Jimmy's bat. Jimmy, it's time for practice. Get out to the training field now. Hey, you're not Jimmy. Anyway, that's our weapon for the rest of the stage. We're distinctly not Jimmy, but the bat does not object to its new handler. Okay, so mechanical thing here. I'm coming up on the next hallway. I'm going to be dodging a bunch of enemy encounters. Enemy encounters in this game are marked with the sixth sense. So every single trap in the game corresponds to a sense, and that's how you like tell traps apart in this game, or at least you're meant to be able to do that. It's questionable. Sixth sense corresponds to items and enemy encounters, but if I avoid entire spawns, uh, I can just hug the left wall and therefore not actually trigger any of the encounters in this hall, which is very, very convenient for my purposes. Uh, right, the traps here, bloodstain, oven, grill, top of the door. 
This is all pattern dependent, although just for safety, I'm gonna pick up this Kaiseki hidden on the table. Uh, that is a that is a Kaiseki Ridori, which is a kind of like Japanese set meal. You can pick up entire Japanese set meals and keep them in your skirt. They will restore you to full health. <laughs> Now I'm gonna tag this ceiling fan because that's a trap and that empty space. You can tag enemy encounters in this game and while tagging an enemy encounter doesn't allow you to avoid the enemy encounter, except it's not on this pattern, so I told a flying lie. Uh, uh, tagging an enemy encounter means your heart rate won't increase when you get in the fight, nor will you suffer a knockdown at the beginning of the fight if correctly tagged. That's the benefit to tagging fights. It also results in enemies not being aggroed at the start of fights, which is convenient, so you can run away from them easier. Avoid an enemy encounter here by taking a wide line around, and the dead body is definitely a scare on this pattern. Some scares, even when tagged, will still play their associated cutscenes, but you won't take any damage nor will you get a knockdown, so it's still faster to tag them. I'm pretty sure I can avoid this by banking left. Yup, that was a bit brave, but I did it anyway. Have I gotten into combat yet? I think this is the first encounter I get into in this stage. So I'm going to tag this encounter here, and to the best of my knowledge, this is completely unavoidable. Uh, now I get to show you what combat is like. Combat uh, is I run away from fights by summoning a helicopter to escape from via ladder. I could fight things with my baseball bat. I'm not going to do that, because that takes ages and isn't worth the effort. Instead, I'm going to achieve a narrow and escape via a helicopter. They're gone now. Is, is the helicopter a metaphor? Or is it literal? How big or small is it? <laughs> Uh, it's big enough, apparently. That's the main method for dealing with combat in this game, is to not deal with combat in this game, because uh, the, the trade-off is that if you defeat enemies, you get adrenaline back, but it's barely ever worth doing. <laughs> so uh, I just escape from everything. Ow, that guy's down. Are you gonna do stab me? Man who got stabbed. <laughs> Right, tagging enemy encounters again. This enemy will be a uh, a crash test dummy with a wrench. I would like to avoid aggroing him, but unfortunately he faces the escape pad. You gotta run over to these helipad things and press B rapidly in order to bring the, the ladder down to escape. I can also dodge enemy attacks by pressing A with good timing. Uh, that raises my heart rate though, so if I abuse it too much, I will slowly start to die. Uh, and if, if your heart rate gets too high, uh, yes, you absolutely can, like, frighten yourself to death. If your heart rate reaches 255, you die. Yeah, pretty pretty bad heart rate to have, not gonna lie. Yeah, but Eriko is a champion, right? So, like, this game actually has light RPG elements that I do not engage with one bit in the speedrun because it's completely unnecessary for me. Eriko is, despite being the first character you get in this game, statistically, she's just the best. Because there's, like, there's a stat that denotes uh, how strong one's heart is, how hardy you are versus scares. Eriko starts out maxed. She starts with a maxed out heart rate. She never needs any upgrade. She has an iron heart, meaning her heart rate increases very slowly. And in fact, uh, when you get other characters, if you try and use them, you notice that they like die in four scares because they're very faint of heart. All right, now we're going to use Jimmy's trophy and Jimmy's like testimonial question mark. I don't know what that means. Uh, and this is Mr. Van Below, Jimmy's father. He is a, a a mutated individual now with a flamethrower, which is not convenient for my purposes. I can't kill him right now. You may notice it says infinite in the top right. That means I cannot win this fight. I need to escape. So I'm going to bait him. Or his AI could just do that, I guess. Whatever, that works too. Another narrow escape. Thus begins a maze area where I have to escape from Van Below without being caught. So this is a bit random, but not that random. Ban below spawns in fixed places, so if I take the same sort of line every time, uh, I should be capable of getting through this without getting into an unnecessary fight, but sometimes the game makes it very, very irritating. And sometimes the game will just kind of be like, no, you're, you're, you're getting this fight, you're taking this fight. It works like 90% of the time, but 90 is not 100, so I got a bank hard left here, bait him out. There he is, go around, just about that. That's actually, that was a lot closer than it looks. Bambolo's hitbox is ginormous. Is there a non-narrow escape? No. Escapes are always narrow in Illbleed. There is no such thing as a non-narrow escape. That's foolishness. <laughs> so I have to ask, uh, with a game like this, how long did it take you to kind of like figure out every pattern for every level? Weeks. 
month. It was like, I streamed almost all of it. It was like a solid week and a half of just nothing but constantly replaying stages over and over again and taking notes to figure out, A, how many patterns there were, because I didn't know there were three patterns going in. I had to work that out. And then I took notes on what all the traps in each pattern were, and then I discovered optimizations for each pattern, like which traps are avoidable on which patterns and which ones aren't, which fights can be taken and which can be avoided. It took a long time to get this down. What is he doing? He was having a normal one there. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, well, that was actually that. Aside from that, that went pretty good. So now I'm going into a boss fight. I have to fight this with a baseball bat because I don't have a gun. The strategy here is you want to stay at Bambalo's side where he'll kind of like whiff his flamethrower on you. You're kind of in his blind spot, but you got to like keep dashing up to his side so he doesn't uh, get too far away from you and hit you. Because the flamethrower also causes bleed damage, which as I've uh, established is the most threatening thing in this game by far. Like you will not, you will not die of health damage, you will bleed to death. That was perfect. That loop was spot on. And then we save our first and only character we're going to save, Kevin, because it is almost impossible to not save Kevin. Uh, in order for Kevin to die there, once you start the maze, uh, you have to wait 15 minutes in real time for Kevin to die. And I, I tried to avoid hit, hit, like, saving him by jumping over him. I tried to do a bunch of stuff. I've, Kevin is just coming with us because he's too clingy. Anyway, there's also a giant band below now. Uh, Context not needed, honestly. I don't know what context I could provide that would make this make any more sense, really. It's just here now, okay? This is the reality now. We must make our peace with that. I'm dodging through the hits. Like, it looks stupid because I'm just doing like, shoot. Erika does a little shoot, little shoot movement, but I'm not taking any damage because I'm dodging at the correct time. The dodge is completely invincible. Like, it, it does. it's not a matter of avoiding the hit. It's just, are you dodging when an enemy is attacking you? Yes, no. That was a bit early, but luckily he missed, so I don't care. Also, platforming. If you're, if you're thinking right now, is the platforming in this game as awkward as it looks? Yes. Yes, it is. It's very, very stiff, and you have to, like, really commit to you. You're, like, married to your jump park once you leave the ground. Okay, that also went quite well. And now I'm going to beat this guy to death in cold blood. I just, I killed a park worker. He's dead now. And now I'm going to steal his uh, ID card to leave. Because he was controlling the robot that was trying to kill us, right? It turns out it was a robot, but it turns out the park worker was also a robot. Uh, we didn't know that, though, before we killed him. We, we, we fully intended to murder a human being there. Eriko absolutely, there's like a slow pan cutscene of Eriko's hand, like, gripping a baseball bat tighter. And then you, like, you're, you go to kill him. And it's like, oh, he was a robot, so it's okay that I just absolutely tried to murder someone. And now we have to awkwardly platform all the way back, uh, well, I say all the way back, all the way to the exit. It is quite possible to go the wrong way during the initial chase sequence, by the way, and have to, like, walk into the boss all the way back. That will almost certainly get you killed if that happens. There's a reason the game puts a save point just before this. <laughs> Uh, and if you're wondering why don't you just run through the water, it's crazy slow. It's the slowest slow that has ever slowed. But the water doesn't do any damage, it's not harmful or anything, it's just super, super slow. Awkward platforming, awkward, there we go, all the way at the end of this. That was actually a pretty good stage one, frankly. It's one of the better ones I've had. Got to put the ID card in the thing. Keys in this game don't use automatically. You have to manually use them every single time. And every single time I'm, I'm every single time I'm opening the menu, I'm holding down the trigger button because the trigger button makes the menu scroll in faster. I don't know why. It does, and it's like two seconds every time. It speeds up like a very slow animation by a lot. So yeah, you get a lot of mileage out of that. Anyway, we gain uh, forty-three thousand dollars at the end of the stage. We now effectively have infinite money. <laughs> items in this game are cheap and beating one stage gives you just a ton of it you're supposed to be spending that money on the rpg elements uh, and i'm not so i'm just i'm buying healing items and gores and stuff because uh, i need that to survive if in any stage that has forced combat item buying is still a thing you do in the speedrun because combat in this game is unpredictable and avoiding damage is generally kind of impossible. <laughs> so you need to keep some healing items on hand. Okay, second stage, Revenge of the Queen Worm. This stage, everything I just told you about trap detections and RNG patterns and figuring out which pattern you're on, uh, forget absolutely everything I just said, the genre has changed again. 
This, this stage has no traps to detect and does not work like the first stage at all. Not a bit. Because we still need to pick up the horror monitor, though. So we still need to use this tool. I have the horror monitor? So oh. I am wondering, what's the in-game no, reason you need to get a new horror monitor, monitor every time? The back. There isn't one. Like, didn't you have in the last level? Yeah, I did. They just take it away from you at the end of every stage for no reason. It's just not there. Oh. There's, there's, there's no reason. You just need to pick up a new one. Anyway, a monkey stole my horror monitor. It's gone now. And you may oh, think, oh, I need to get my horror monitor back. You don't. That's it. It's gone for the rest of the stage. There's, there's no traps in this level. This is a purely combat-focused stage. Skipping cutscenes. Okay, so the first port of order here is we need to gracefully dodge a bunch of worms. This, this stage is a Tremors parody. Spot the joke. Let's see if I can remember where I'm going, moreover. Uh, is this inside or outside? I'm trying to avoid an enemy encounter here. Yes, inside. Good. If taking the inside line there will avoid an enemy encounter with monkeys, and monkeys are like the worst enemy to fight in this game. They're really fast, and they can rack up hits on you quickly. So uh, I'm avoiding all of the enemy encounters. Where possible, at least. So I need to avoid a worm here. You can see it kind of burrowing in the ground. I'll take this line to avoid it. Okay, 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 good. This again is like slightly random, but not that random. If I take the correct lines, should be good. But uh, I can get unlucky. And because I can get unlucky, that's why I bought items, safety items. Because uh, if an enemy like cheap shots you even a couple times, you'll start to bleed. And when the bleeding gauge reaches a certain point, and it doesn't need to be very high, it just needs to be a certain point. When it reaches a certain point, you will start to increasingly bleed to death every time you walk. Or run, rather. Oh, there's a... Okay, that one just spawned directly in front of me. That's kind of rude. Yeah, that's the free hit that I was talking about. There's no avoiding that if that happens. So you see the blood gauge has now appeared. There, there's a little mark above the blood gauge there. It's like a, like this little like blue-white triangle thing. Uh, when the blood gauge gets past that point, your health will start to decrease. Not very quickly, but it will start to decrease, and you don't have much health. You've got enough, but you don't have much. It's not infinite. You'll run out. But more pressingly is the fact that now uh, it's not that isn't the point where the blood gauge will start to increase by itself. Because you notice I'm running, but my blood gauge isn't going up. If I get hit again, or maybe like another two times, uh, the blood gauge will begin to increase by itself just when I run. Uh, and that makes a speed run difficult because you you can avoid that in this game by walking or by standing still, whereupon the blood gauge will decrease over time. So technically, if I wanted to heal my blood gauge all the way back to normal, I could just stand still for 30 minutes. But this, my friends, is a speed run. I don't have time for that. So uh, once the blood gauge reaches the point of increasing by itself, that is a problem because it, it will 100% kill you if left untreated. Because you will, you will, you generally do not have enough time to like to buzz a beat of the blood gauge before the end of the level, especially as the stages start to get long. Uh, anyway, I need this baby bottle to please a ghost. There's a ghost in front of the convenience store. It wants a baby bottle. The like context won't help you there. It just wants one. Okay. Give it a baby bottle. Meet this guy. That guy is holding a baby. Remember that. That's why we gave him a baby bottle. Clearly, he has a baby. Gotta use my keys again to get behind the store. With my five bowls of ramen in my skirt. Mutant worms! You gotta. Okay, I'm banking hard right past all these billboards because there's fights here and I would rather not take them. So as long as I take the right line, I avoid all encounters in this area. There's actually a lot of stuff I'm avoiding by taking particular lines. Hugging uh, the wall tends to help. So one of the weirder questions I had is, why is the food localized? Oh yeah, I'm playing the Japanese version of this game for no other reason than just because i that's the version I have. Uh, by the way, there's a flamethrower under this billboard. It's just here. Don't worry about it. It'll get used in a moment. Uh, but I'm playing the Japanese version of this game, so the food items in this game are different in the English and Japanese versions. In the Japanese version, uh, the medium and large food items are ramen bowls and kaiseki dori. 
In the、uh, English version, the mid tier food is a salad, and the large food is a steak dinner. Very American. This game was not released in Europe. I can, I can only assume what would have happened if they ported this game to Europe. I'm assuming something with beans. Something with beans. Is that, what, is that what you think of European cuisine? Actually, I'm British. I have no room to talk. Yes. <laughs> British cuisine is not a thing. I think fish and chips and beans on toast. <laughs> fish and beans on toast. Those、oh, are the two foods. No. <laughs> the two foods. We have salad and steak in America, ramen and I don't remember the other one. Kaiseki. It's, it's a specific kind of Japanese set. No, they're like $100 or something、like, and more. They can get crazy expensive. Huh. That's, that's why all the prices in the in game store are crazy. Like a bowl of ramen in this game costs $650. It's because it's yen. <laughs> like $650 yen for a bowl of ramen makes some sense. $650 for a bowl of ramen, nah, pal. In fairness, they give you $50,000 for going on one ride. True. Oh my god, I missed the jump. No, I had to avoid the floor because then you get into an unavoidable encounter with the big worm, the queen worm. Her name's Rachel. Her name's name Rachel. We, we learned in a cutscene that I didn't actually activate in the shed <laughs> that、uh, the baby that that ghostly man was holding was actually a worm. It was Rachel. And one day, while he was playing with his baby worm, that sounds disgusting out of context, excuse me.、Uh, he dropped the worm in a, in a can of gasoline?、Question、mark?、Uh, and it caused the worm to mutate and become very big. But it makes、uh. a lot of worms because it's a big worm. The big worm can breed. Other smaller ones that made that man very, very rich, but it also made him unhappy, and then eventually he died. And the ghost's request to us is to kill the worm so that we can reunite the two in the afterlife.、Uh, in order to do that, we need to burn it to death with fire. This is the ghost's advice. That's、oh. all in a note that I can't read to you because I'm playing the Japanese version and I'm not going to bother to try and live translate. Uh, right, so a boss fight. I need to get counter hits. That's a counter hit. See, when they do an attacking animation, if I attack them first or on recovery, I get counter hit. That deals more damage and gives me a nice animation where they recall in pain so I have more time to set them on fire. The problem is that whether or not Rachel decides to play the game is not up to me and is more up to Rachel. How you doing, Rachel? Hey, there we go. Counter hit. Rachel can kind of like do an attack where I can't hit them. They can also just go. Places and have fun, or they can stand in inconvenient locations. Blah, 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 blah. This whole fight is, is a thing. See, that's not counter hit. That's damage, but that isn't counter hit. Counter hit is a very important state in your game. Remember this, it will come up later. This will be on the test. I'm getting a lot of hits, but a lot of counter hits. There's a counter hit. Hey, hey, big damage, big damage. Rachel? I'm hit. Rachel? Funny thing about this game's camera as well, by the way. The camera is currently fixed in place, but sound effect volume is relative to the camera, so while the fight is currently taking place in the back like this, you can't hear any of the sound effects. Because they're, they're distant from the camera. So you can't hear me firing the flamethrower or Rachel doing stuff. Thanks, Rachel. I appreciate it. That attack is basically unavoidable. Ooh, ooh, this worm. This is bad. <laughs> There we go. That took a hot minute. A hot minute. Funny streamer. Okay, Rachel is dead. I have burned Rachel to death and I have reunited. I have reunited the ghost of Rachel.、Uh, take a moment to indulge in the pathos of your belief, shall we? It's the ghost of Bruce Forsyth. So, you appear. Wait, is that your Twitter picture right now?、Oh, It is, yes. At last, we can be together forever. Let's go back to hell. Hey, you. Let's go back to hell. Thank you. I'll never forget. Why did you go to hell? They said, let's go back to hell. They say this very nonchalantly. Oh. They've, they've both gone back to hell. See you later, old man. He said, thank you. I wonder what the worm did to go to hell. Tried to kill me. Oh, you know, I guess that is right. 
bad one. All right, now we're going to put gasoline in the car and that will end the stage. We've also cruelly left one of our friends to die in the process. Most stages in this game have an optional friend that you can save, apart from Kevin, who is like optional to kill. <laughs> He's so in the way. I got a perfect score on that stage. I got all the money. All right, buy items. This is where item buying becomes like especially important. I was doing it for the first two stages because that makes the run safe, even though I don't think I actually use them. But now it becomes necessary because now there is combat and a lot of it. Combat in this game is a chaotic nightmare. Okay, so stage uh, three. I've got, hang on, I'm scrolling my notes. I need notes for this game. If you think I memorized three entire sets of patterns for every single stage, you have another thing coming. I wrote them down. All right, that makes uh, a lot more sense for the patterns. Yeah, no, I, I didn't memorize them. I run with notes. I would hope, actually, I'd really hope you'd run this game with notes, given the amount of, what, like five stages, three patterns per stage? Six, I think. Uh -huh. Six? Is it six or, or six five? Stages. I, don't... I think it meant six patterns. I was like, oh. Six stages, three patterns, it's a lot. All right, so there's the horror monitor. We're in, we're in the stage Wood Puppets, which concerns uh, an evil activity going on in a lumber mill. We will see what is happening here in due time. This is ride number three. We are once again back to the trap spotting style of gameplay. So in this first one here, I need to quickly figure out what pattern am I on? What am I on? What's the, what's the thing here? Uh, it's back right saw blade. That is pattern A, baby. Tag that one. I'm standing right, okay. Pattern A, picture above the chainsaw, right. That's pattern A, 100%. So bank the hard right here, avoid this scare. And then we need this lumberjack's axe, but first. Two holes going to cut the tree, going to cut the tree. And I got to cut the tree, cause I love to cut the tree. Yo ho ho, and I'm out of control. I gotta cut the tree. Someone like mix that into a, like a good break beat. I've gotta cut the tree, I've gotta cut the tree, you know? Anyway, the tree cut him and he bled to death. I guess, oh. even though that was a statue. I just want his axe, man. It's mine now. All right, now I need to pay attention to my own notes here. What is the next scare? It's the box and the bloodstain smashing. Okay. Box, bloodstain. Tag these scares so I don't take damage or get scared or blah de blah Cool. It's also the wall with lights. The hearing sensors going, which means it's the wall with the light holes in it, which is a, cool. an abstract reasoning. And here's a rude thing from this game. Uh, two scares basically right next to each other. This makes it honestly very difficult to tag the one I even want to tag. So sometimes I just don't bother and I just tag everything. Because I, I, I have enough leeway with this. That if scares are too close together, it's less effort and faster to just tag everything. Anyway, I think if I bank this, I can avoid everything. All right, good line. You gotta do that like, you gotta hug the wall like your life depends on it, because it does. <laughs> That's one of our friends. He's a wood puppet now. That's good old Randy Fairbanks. We haven't actually seen Randy in human form, and we won't this whole run, but he like talks like a surfer dude. He's kind of great, but it would have taken too long to show the opening cutscene with a minute. It's like 10 minutes long. Sorry. I regret it too. Poor Randy. Poor Randy. He's great. He's like my favorite performer in this. I think this is the only game his voice actor even worked on. Randy. Okay. Tag this trap. This is avoidable, but I never trust this line. I hate it. And that trap does like a ton of damage. Anyway, I need to steal this man's wood. It's mine now. Oh no, he wants his wood back. Okay, thus demonstrate one of the principles of Illweek's combat, which is that it's slow and weird. But uh, I need to kill this guy by doing enough damage to him and then getting a counter hit. Unless I get a counter hit state where he like reels back like that, he will not die. It's not that counter hits are the only thing that deal damage or that they even deal more damage. It's that enemies don't die unless they enter a counter hit animation. So he needs to reel back before he'll die. And it's not happening, you see. I've done enough damage. He will die next counter hit state. I'm not getting it. There it is. He'll die now. See? On cue. You need a counter hit to kill regular enemies in Illweek. Not bosses, just regular enemies. This rude trap is positioned exactly two steps in front of the door as soon as you enter this room. I'm happy she just says cool after murdering a guy. Cool. Cool. I stole his wood, man. Okay, you see now my blood gauge is starting to rise by itself while I run because it reached a higher point because combat happened. 
that is a uh, that's how ill bleed works. Combat will happen. Whether or not you take damage is more or less not in your control. Cool. You just you just learn to live with it more so than you try and mitigate it. Okay, no enemy encounter on this pattern here. Goody goody. Okay, now I get a chance to menu so I can heal my bleeding and put the wood inside the keypad, which activates the keypad, and then I solve a little puzzle. Uh, puzzle here is one of the only things that differ between the English and Japanese versions of this game, because that puzzle is a different in America because it's a word pun in Japanese. You, uh, you have to get uh, a number out of the phrase hitogoroshi, which means to kill a person. But it sounds like numbers in Japanese if you pass out the syllables, so it becomes 1564. Hitogoroshi. I, that probably made sense to someone, okay? Look at my notes for this room because I'm bad. Uh, okay, got it. Cool. Check the pipe, and it's gonna be the right pipe. Is it this one? Okay. Oh yeah, we jumped into a machine, and we're also now a wood puppet. That's 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 what happened. I kind of glossed over that. Sorry, I'm so used to this. We're we're a wood puppet now. Can the puppet bleed? Yes. Oh. Profusely. This also means we can no longer escape combat, and that's why this scenario is so combat heavy. Because we can no longer avoid fights, and we will have to get into a couple. Uh, that's the that's the evil that's been happening at the, the uh, at the lumber mill. Is people are turning into wood puppets, and now a hunting game is beginning. Woodman hunting. Lumberjacks enter left. Woodman men people huh? enter right side. The, the terminology is not even clear inside the game. And lumberjacks gain points if they kill wood men like us. We so need it's to kinda escape. Like, uh, win. It's kind of like the most dangerous game, but with more wood and flannel. Yes. We are now a participant in a killing game, like a killing game inside a killing game. Illbleed is itself a killing game where they like, because the premise of Illbleed is that if you survive all of the attractions in Illbleed, you win one hundred million dollars. And so Eriko's friends try and win the $100 million, but they don't come back. And Eriko's like, I guess I gotta go in and save them. And then you survive all the attractions and get the money. Okay, so now I have to avoid lumberjacks. Uh, I will do this by opening the map repeatedly, because opening the map freezes them in place as the lumberjacks helpfully try and give me directions before trying to kill me. So if I keep asking them for directions, they won't touch me. That is the plan here. And again, uh, using the menu trick where I hold down the triggers to speed up the, the scroll in works on the map as well. So if I keep doing that, I will save plenty of time over the course of this whole sequence. But it's much faster to do this than to take any fights. Because the fights take a while and I can no longer run from them. And again, I can engage. Very polite. They'll try. They'll try their best. They'll be like, wait, wait, "What's what's the way to the station?" And they'll be like, "Oh, it's, it's up here." And before they know it, I've like ran past them. They're like, "Oi, mate!" And I'm gone. I'm gone, mate. I'm scarce. It's like for a moment they forgot it was a killing game. Oh wait, <laughs> this guy, he spawned behind me, dude. It'll bleed. The horror game makes the horror runner jump a little. Ah, that's too close. As soon as I get past like here, I'm safe. Cutscene. Safe. He spawns. Goody goody. Okay, so I'm at the halfway point of the chase. I need these wood-eating termites. They're called woodola in the English version. In Japanese, they just they're just called wood-eating bug. Aren't, I don't know. Aren't I didn't we made out of wood? This. We are. Yeah, we can pick up wood-eating bugs though. Every, everyone points that out, and I gloss over it completely. We're picking up wood-eating bugs and putting it in our inventory so we can get rid of this tree. And it's like, aren't we made of wood? And it's like, yeah, aren't we made out of wood? <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's all good. Now we're on the upper level. The lumberjacks can't come up here because they don't understand verticality. Their job is to cut down trees. They don't understand up. They resent up. So we are safe as long as I don't do something stupid and fall off, which I have done once and it made me cry. Because the walk back around takes ages and I would prefer not. My bleed meter is non-existent because I haven't been hit. I'm actually doing very well at the moment. 
It's going well, what can I say? I budget a lot of healing for because one bad hit in this game can like take your bleeding meter from like 0 to 25%. It's a very uh, volatile speed game. But uh, I'm, I'm doing alright so far. It's going well. It's going smoothly. Now that I've said that, it will start to not go well. I should be more humble. Okay, so there will be another lumberjack guy who will spawn on the corner about here, and I'm going to freeze him in place with the map trick in a favorable position. Because if he gets like too close to the middle here, it becomes very difficult to avoid him. So if I preemptively map trick freeze the guy, I can cut a line around him like so, and avoid an encounter. And he can scare me by appearing in my periphery like that. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. So, uh, does this, um, does the map trick work on other enemies who kind of do this thing like the flamethrower guy earlier? Yeah, it does. I just never use it on him because it's generally not necessary. I, I have the lines sorted out for that one. But yeah, this does work on pretty much every overworld enemy in the game that, like, is a moving entity. It can also, it, it will also get play later against a, uh, a knife-wielding doll, because we're doing all the horror things here. Dillbleed is a loving pastiche parody mix of a whole bunch of horror media, uh, and also it frequently just goes nuts itself and does its own thing completely. It is, it is a game that has no boundaries, no reservations, and just does, shamelessly does whatever the hell it felt like at any given moment. And you will see, like, we, we are, like, halfway through. We have not even touched half the content. Okay, we've made it to the goal. We've made it to the goal. We have won the Woodman Hunting Contest by surviving. Except we haven't, because the Lumberjacks cheat and hide in lockers. That's it is time to unveil Chi Po's no Jutsu! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So what the, the rule about getting counter hits is still true, but uh, here's the thing about wood puppets, they're actually really good at fighting. <laughs> but this move is kind of hidden, because you have to you have to press like the gun fire button, there is melee attack and there is shoot gun. Uh, T-Pose no Jutsu is on shoot gun. It took, I actually, I genuinely forgot the move existed for a while when I was routing this game, I was like, oh this is much better, I'm not doing this. So obviously next time we get into a fight, we just need to start spinning our arms around our bodies. Assert dominance, man. Dude, Beyblade. <laughs> the other attack is this kick, which I will show you just for funsy. It's a much worse move, but uh, I'm going to show you. That's the kick. It makes a little rotating kick. I did the leg spin action. like that. I don't know. The wood puppets, man. Tag that trap. There's also a cheeky little trap here in this room. You gotta be, you gotta watch out for that one. Uh, I think no three. This pattern has three fights. That's lame. Some patterns have two fights in this final hallway. Some have three. This is one of the three fight patterns. Uh, and that is therefore that therefore that makes this pattern objectively worse than the others because these are these are the only sort of like traps can be tagged. And I'm hiding behind a locker, which is making it really difficult to see what I'm doing. Hey camera, mate, you wanna help out here? That was still a really good fight. Yeah, those fights are unavoidable, so three fight patterns are worse than two fight patterns. Such is such is speed gaming. We are now going to cure ourselves of our woodness. That again came out weird. Whatever, I'm Erico now, okay? Uh, I'm gonna play it like uber uber safe and heal myself before the boss encounter of the area. So I am now a normal human once again. I have lost my extreme fighting prowess that I once had. Uh, as a wood puppet, but I have now gained an axe. This will help me fight a tree. A giant tree that the, the, the park workers couldn't really get to come out properly. It kind of screws up the first time you go in, but that cutscene's pretty long. Sorry. It's funny. This game has a lot of funny cutscenes that I'm glossing over because they're a bit long. I'm trying, I'm trying to, like, give you the greatest hits collection here. So I hang in this corner and I can dodge clean through his attacks as long as my timing is good and I don't accidentally cancel my dodge too early by attacking because you can attack cancel dodges in this game. The tech is real. Where are the FGC heads working on like Illblade combos? I mean, this is the only combo there is in Illblade. It's one, two, three. That was a perfect fight. Good timing, good timing. I've really gotten that down. Sweet, good wood puppets all in all. Very clean. Now I just need to escape via the long, haunted passageway with nothing in it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
And it's like an atmosphere thing. Or it exists to kill you after the boss fight by letting you slowly beat to death because you've got to run. <laughs> Fortunately, on a speedrun, we get lots of money for clearing stages like this because uh, at the end of every stage, we gain money based on our performance. So r remaining health, remaining adrenaline, number of tap the traps tagged. Try saying that five times faster. Uh, heart rate and such, and also time. But because speedruns are fast, uh, we do very well on time. So we get lots of cash, like $116,000. You can buy the whole store worth of items per stage. We also need to rebuy items every stage, because like I said earlier, items are taken away from us at the end of every level. So uh, my health items do not carry from stage to stage. So I need to rebuy the whole set before we enter a stage. And again, I want lots of gores because bleeding to death is a problem. Well, the game is called, uh, Ill Bleed. Yeah, I know, right? Like, who would have thought? Or is it called Isle Bleed? If you're playing this game casually, my highest recommendation is you find artificial plasma upgrades, because like I said, there's RPG elements, uh, and you, you upgrade your bleeding to bleed as little as possible, because the bleeding will get you before anything else will. Uh, so we're on the killer department store now. And the money for this stage gets paid in advance, but traps in this stage will take money away from you because the premise of this stage is a killer shopping spree. The owner of the department store will pay people to shop in his store on a mega sale, but then the store like tries to kill. Ooh, trolley seat, fascinating. Uh, so that trolley is a scare. That means I automatically know what pattern I'm on because trolley scare is only on pattern V. Woohoo. But I've named the patterns completely arbitrarily, by the way. Like, I didn't do these in order. I just... Pattern B is trolley. I, I say it, therefore it is so. You could call it whatever. These are just the names that I came up with. Like, no one else runs this game. It's just me. I, I made up everything. <laughs> it's all on a whim. As a side note, I guess a killer department store is quite fitting, given the uh, Thanksgiving holiday and Black Friday and all that. The park is empty. Tag in these traps. These are another example of traps being very close to each other, so it's better to just tag both of them and get on with your life rather than trying to fastidiously hit every single one. Uh, what are the traps here? Check the notes, check the notes. Pink jelly in the middle, purple on the ceiling. This game has camera invert. Oh my god, please stop. There we go. Tag the right kinds of jelly so I don't get hurt. Someone explain it. Uh, I'll reiterate. I'll reiterate. Yeah. Try a sentence, Punchy. I'll reiterate it again for anyone who uh, got here a bit late. Every single stage has three patterns: uh, pattern A, B, and C, which I have named completely arbitrarily. Uh, they are picked at the start of each stage randomly. It isn't one fixed pattern for the whole game. Every single stage individually will roll between A, B, and C every single time you load into it. You can load a save file, load back into that stage, and you'll roll a different pattern. Uh, and every pattern, some pat there are constants between some patterns, but generally speaking, traps will move around a bit. I need this machete. Uh, so the first thing you do when starting a level in a speedrun is you try and figure out what pattern you're on, because when you identify your pattern, you know where all the traps are going to be, or at least I do. Because I took, like, two weeks of my life to work all of that out. I'm writing a tutorial for this game. It's like three hours. It's it's taking a while. It's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to go over. It's like three playthroughs of the game, obviously. So, was that all right? So now we're in. The... Uh, that was a giant cake. That was the hell cake. Uh, he wants a severed head as decoration for his cakeness. So I I gave him a severed head as a decoration. And as one does. On. Yeah, I don't know. That, 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 he's not even a major character. Like, that's it. He's just... That's all he's there for. Is to request a severed head, and then he gets out of the way. Cool. When you step into a trap, a little animation plays of, like, a spooky thing happening, and it may deal big damage, or it may just scare you a bit. Uh, and I want to avoid that. Uh, anyway, giant cockroaches. I need to feed these giant cockroaches chicken until they leave me alone. But sometimes they want more than one piece of chicken, so I refuse to give them more chicken. Uh, and then they, then they, then they beat me. They, they attack me, and it does damage. The amount of chicken these guys want is random, and I, I've never deduced any sort of relationship to the the RNG pattern. See, that's that's two fails. Sometimes you get it on one, uh, and you save time. Sometimes you do not. 
It is not a huge variance, but the cutscene where they uh, they 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 kick your ass is uh, not skippable. But we enter the steakhouse with one meat, and that's good because then we only have to kill one chicken by stabbing it, and that makes the fight really quick. That's the trick of that part of the game. If you bring too much meat to try and like appease the cockroaches, uh, you will enter the steakhouse with lots of meat, and then all the meat becomes reanimated and tries to kill you. So if you're carrying a lot of meat, that fight becomes very difficult. If you ain't carrying much meat, that fight's very easy, but you can't enter the steakhouse with no meat. That's no good. I ran too far to the left. Okay, that's a problem. Is, uh, I was trying to avoid this encounter, but got owned. Is there a cap on how much meat you can grab? Nine per type. Okay. I've done the fight once by having everything in my inventory at the same time. Oh good, both fight pattern. Great RNG, love that. That is obnoxious, and I hate it. Anyway, whether or not you get in those two fights is random, and I hate it. Uh, that is an onion. The onion tried to scare me. Not a fan of that, mate. In my notes, I call this room the smelly room. I don't know why. It I does just... look quite smelly. It seems smelly. It looks like I'm bleeding to death right now, and I am, but don't worry about it. That usually happens at this point in the game. The cockroaches do a lot of damage. Cool. It'll be treated later. Don't don't worry about it. I'm not gonna die. Wait, there's supposed to be vegetables. I'm gonna hit this trap for fun. It's a pineapple, dude. Pineapple. Okay, that did a lot of damage. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I did. <laughs> I just have to imagine a pineapple mugging you for cash. The pineapple stole a thousand dollars off me, dude. That is the worst pineapple I've ever met. Anyway, I've healed myself back up to full, and I really need to do that because the worst fight in the game, the hardest fight in the game. If, if a run dies anywhere, it'll be here. Uh, three standard enemies at the same time. This cutscene is unskippable. This isn't a boss fight. It's, it's not an anything. It's just three of these worm dudes at the same time. This is the most difficult fight in the game. Remember what I said about needing a counter hit to kill enemies? Well, now you got to get a counter hit on three enemies and do enough damage to kill them. But these enemies, whether or not they feel like giving you an attack to counter hit in the first place, uh, is a art more than it is a science. I, I, get, I got a hit there, but it wasn't counter. Fine by me. No counter hits here. Not yet. It's also really hard to see what I'm doing. Uh, the, the enemy hitboxes are also atrocious. Uh, enemies can cover for their friends. It's all, it's all, it's all a mess with these these enemies. I hate them. They're bad. Okay, that's counter hit. And the guy covered for his friend. Like I said, that was a free counter hit, and the guy covered. So I'm going. Uh, I'm going to assume on this one that this is probably one of the hardest fights in the game. It's the hardest fight in the game. That's counter hit. Will that kill? Yes, one down. Let's get the other two. Annoying. Very annoying. Counter hit potential. That's counter hit. Will it kill? No. Mm. Disappointed. I'm slowly starting to die. Give me that counter hit. Give me that juicy counter hit. Yes. Oh, what a dodge. Get the counter hit. Oh, that was smooth. That was smooth. Okay. That didn't go so hard, but I made up for it at the end there. That move was smooth. The reactions were tight. Okay, I'm past the scariest fight in the game. I may now breathe out. And now we go to Toy World. We need a certain amount of money to get to Toy World, but we have all the money in the universe. And now we need to advance past rows of toys that will all try and kill us. And both of these, the robot and the regun, will try and kill you. Both of them, right next to each other. Very nice. Pattern B, so first hat rack and the last set of cards will try and kill you. See, I highly recommend people play this game casually, just because there's nothing else like it. No one's ever made a game like Illbleed. And they never will, ever again. It's a work of mad genius. I have to wonder how many games of killer hats. How many games of killer hats? How many games of, like, trap detection mechanics? Etc, etc. 
This next trap is the plane. Sometimes it's the plane on the corner. But it isn't on pattern B. Uh, and now we need to avoid getting killed by Dreamcasts. There's a Dreamcast here. It's a scare. It'll try and kill us. This game was published by Sega, by the way. They, they had a large... Ha this was not developed by Sega. It was published by them. It was not developed by them. But it, they, that did allow uh, Crazy Games, as the developer, a certain amount of license when it came to uh, using Sega's imagery and intellectual property. And also, Sega are just cool about that sort of thing. Excuse me. Okay, heading into the basement. Oh, ooh, sexy doll. Excuse me. It's a Christian live stream. Can't do that. Ah, uh, yes, sexy doll. All right, now we're entering Cutie Mary's Maze of Death. We need to find all four pieces of the Mary crest key thing in order to escape the maze before she stabs us to death. Mary works like the flamethrower guy does, or the lumber people do, in that they can be frozen by asking for directions. Uh, and you really, really do not want to take a fight with Mary, she's very strong. And she also, even though you're not a wood puppet, getting into a fight with her means you have to win in order to escape. She cannot be stalled forever by asking for directions. That is... <laughs> Will this work? Will this work? Will this work? We Okay, just about. Again, the hitbox for getting into a fight is larger than you think it is. That was actually quite close. But once again, I will abuse the map opening trick as I come around this corner because Mary will always try and jump you going around the corner. So I use the map trick to kind of like keep her in place. It says it was. It says it was published by Sega in the game itself. Like it's, it's in the credits. It's on the title screen, even actually. I don't know if they own the IP nowadays, mind you. It said copyright of Sega on the main menu. I don't know. It's a dead IP, regardless. Oh, she's like right in the middle. That's a complete pain. Right side, maybe. Can I get away with this? Just about. Woohoo! See ya. That was fortunate. And then I'll get the last piece, and then I will enter into the next portion of the stage. I will nevertheless have to fight Bloody Mary at some point regardless, but I don't want to take extra fights. That is no bueno. She's very strong, and I don't have much health. She's one of the only enemies in the game that it's, like, reasonable to risk dying via, like, health rather than bleeding, because she just she does a lot of damage. Now I gotta put all the keys in the door one by one I did individually. But again, if you know the trick to opening the menu quickly in this game, it's all good. All right, so now she wants to play hide and seek with us. Fortunately, uh, of all the traps that she could be in, if you pick the wrong one, she, you get a little scare and you, you you gain heart rate quite quickly. But the pattern sees the trap that she's hiding in. I'm on pattern B, so she's inside the fridge. <laughs> and then she gets mad and tries to kill us anyway. Because we won at games. The story of my life. Just another hater. Anyway, I gotta get behind her. Do sick combos, get the knockdown, do the setup, get behind her again. Ooh, on the tip. Spacing. Another knockdown. Hard knock. That was brilliant. I didn't get hit once. That fight can go very, very wrong if you let it get out of control. And like I said, she's very powerful. She doesn't got to hit you very many times to put you down for good. That was really good. That was really, really good. It's rare that I do that fight without getting hit. Because, like, that's a that's like a boss. <laughs> that's the boss of this stage, functionally. And I made that look effortless. Hell yeah. Ah, but that wasn't the boss of the stage, now was it? Because the true boss of this stage was... Q for timing. Uh, a game of jump rope. Have I mentioned the platforming in this game isn't very good? Because I have. I must jump over this jump rope ten times. And every single time I press jump, there's like a full second worth of delay because Eriko's like neutral jump is slow as hell. For this one, I literally just mash because trying to time it is a fool's, is a fool's game. I almost missed that one. Ayo! Okay, first try that. That's harder than it looks, I promise, because the controls are so delayed. <laughs> Standing jump in this game is so bad, and I don't think they realized that when they were making that segment. <laughs> 
And now we get on to the boss 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 of the stage. This is Any the boss bosses? of the stage. But it's not really a boss of the stage. This is a puzzle boss. It's a spider made of money. That's Cash Man. That's the Dolatura. He's the one with all the money. Uh, but we must kill capitalism, you see. So we need to climb these stairs. He has money stairs. He has money stairs. I want to be like to that kill spider. By taking Made control. Money. We must quite literally take control, as in we steal the remote control from the control room to kill a spider made of money by making it ram itself into a wall over and over again. Because I now control the spider. The metaphor is very subtle. It is a metaphor. It's very subtle. Also, I can, can I can ins I can instruct the spider to jump on me and kill me. I'm not going to do that, but you are allowed to do that. You are allowed to do that. Is it a one shot or like? No, it does a lot of damage though. <laughs> anyway, we gain a whole mess of cash from that one. Like, like I mean, you, way you murdered awesome. a guy made out of money. Yeah, they gave us like 350 bucks, thousand bucks. Now I'm gonna buy eight million bows of ramen, one intravenous trip, some ni too much nitro. I don't need three, but it doesn't matter. Money's free at this point. Wait. And now we're gonna get into uh, what's the next stage? Scroll my notes. Scroll my notes. Killer man. Yes, the murder mystery level. Let's play a game, Chad. Who do you think is Killer Man? So the goal of Killer Man is to work out a murder mystery. Who is Killer Man? Uh, we can't really see Killer Man right now, but is he some like Pepsi Man looking dude? Is it Pepsi Man? There's Pepsi Man. Also, it spells kill with the Japanese character for kill and curse, which is very cute. I mean, well, cute? I don't know. I like it. Time for a murder mystery. So we enter the, the theater and we find it conspicuously empty. It's like, so is every stage in the game just a movie that we're watching? Maybe. That's the way it could be presented. But we go backstage as nothing is working. Also, and clearly this game was ahead of its time with an empty movie theater. We find a dead guy in Illbleed? No. Uh, so we steal a horror monitor, and we also steal his card number. We don't actually need his card, just his number. I know what it is, so I can get in regardless. And now we need to go report it uh, that there's been a murder in the projection booth. And the control projection booth control room, they're kind of the same thing in this game. Although it's kind of funny that Eriko's instinct on seeing a murder is to break further into the place. I don't know, Eriko is established to be a bit hardy. She's she's strong. She doesn't she scare was, remotely easily. She was and we ready find to kill a guy. <laughs> she was, she tried to kill a guy. We stumble upon this guy who's like, hmm, there's a missing killer man costume. These costumes each cost like $2 million. And we meet Yorg and the, the foreman guy. He's a sneering guy and Yorg is a person we can save later. Although we're not going to because that takes too long. They are both suspects in the killer man case. Could they be killer man? But first we're going to go through the warehouse to find a shotgun and an ID card that we need to access deeper parts of the backstage area. But first I need to figure out what pattern I'm on. And honestly, killer man's patterns can be rather annoyingly complicated. Okay, so back right pull means I'm on pattern C, I think. Pattern C means first blood stain. I always get tripped up on this one. I'm trying to like do a thing here. Uh, no traps here. I must move, make a move towards toilet. You need to trust in toilet when you're on pattern C. Trust the toilet. That is not the thing I wanted to tag. That's the enemy encounter. I want to tag empty space. Otherwise, I will get destroyed by a ceiling fan. See? Perfect. Cool. He knows what's good. Avoid everything else. Okay, good first room. Good first room. Well executed. Avoid a fight here by banking right. Go around this way to avoid more unnecessary enemy encounters. Tag these UFOs because the hitbox for this trap is absolutely ginormous. I'm really far away from that, but I gotta, I gotta tag it. I gotta tag it. Anyway, we're in the backstage of Hillbleed right now, so we're seeing all these props and traps from previous stages reused, like Bloody Mary. There she is again. Uh, I'm gonna escape before she notices me. That's why I tagged her. Free ride. And now, 
I'm reasonably certain that once I've gotten past the Mary fight, every single other trap and encounter in the stage is avoidable if I take the proper line. Although, I never like this popcorn. I don't trust popcorn. It's a good life maxim, I think, to not trust popcorn. Yeah, I didn't- it was on popcorn, anyway. I, I never trust it. I get too close to it and get hit by it a lot. The hitbox is larger than it looks. All good, though. All good. We made it through the warehouse with nary a scratch on us. Perfect health. We now have a shotgun. I could have picked up an axe earlier. I didn't because the axe is useless and doesn't... It, it is useless. It will not get used. So why waste time picking it up, you know? Use the ID card to get out. And then we find everyone is gone. So what to do? What to do? We gotta go all the way back to where we came from. And there's kind of just nothing here in between. <laughs> this stage features a lot of uh, what I could charitably call atmosphere and uncharitably call just sort of dead air, unfortunately. This is backtracking. And there's no traps here at all on any pattern. We just need to go back here and rendezvous with Yorg, who is investigating the murder in the... He's investigating the corpse in the security room uh, in the same way that, like, Barry Burton investigates Chris's blood and that he crouches near it and looks at it very intently for a bit. See? There he is. Bye, Yorg. That's all we needed. I think Yorg, uh, Yorg, Yorg's full character in this game is Yorg S. Baker. I think that's a real person. I base this on the fact that that same name is in the credits, under voice actor. I think he voiced himself. Unless it's a pen name. I don't know. I've heard apocryphal tales of some sort of contest to get your likeness included in Illbleed as a character. I don't know how true that is, I've never been able to source that claim. But there is both a character and a voice actor that share the name in the credits. There, it, it is one of the unsolved mysteries of Illbleed. Anyway, now the chief foreman guy is dead on the ground. I could steal his card again to get through to the next area. But I just need the number. So I can open up this part of the room. Now I'm once again investigating the backstage. Gotta be careful with this trap because this hitbox is also ginormous and I hate it. Ding. And that trap is a spike trap. That does lots of damage if that hits you. And I need to avoid smelly stairs. Do I stairs smell? If they, if, if, if they get near them, it drops a corpse on your head and Erico gets all spooked. I'd like to avoid that. So Killer Man is a slightly differently paced stage in the traps in this level tend to be further apart and less telegraphed by like clusters of objects and stuff. Like this is a this is an empty hallway. This is a maintenance hallway. Very spooky. But however, you see, despite the empty nature of this hallway, uh, this random corner is a trap. How do I know that? Because of course I do. But like it is safe. How are you going to know that if you're playing the game casually? You probably won't. You'll probably just walk into it. Unless you play really, really slowly. And very patiently. You probably won't. We need to tag the first machine here, otherwise everything in this room can be avoided by just sticking right. Cool. Advance to the generator room backstage. Whole bunch of industry going on back here. This is a very large maintenance area. Again, random unmarked patches of floor containing traps is kind of the theme of the Killer Man level. Cool. It's a bit rude like that. The trap mechanic is interesting, and I like the play patterns it produces for like maybe the first three levels. Later stages, they kind of get a bit rude, but it's like, here is a random patch of ground that just has a scare on it. It's like, okay. It's also noteworthy that a... Uh, Traps will not trigger the senses at the top of the screen unless you have line of sight to them. So if it's but around a corner, even if you logically could like smell a smell trap or hear it, if you don't have line of sight to it, it won't trigger the senses. So some traps you have to get obnoxiously close to before it's even like detectable. That's one of the ways in which uh, Ilbly can trick you sometimes. Anchor hard right here to avoid the body bag scare. La-di-da. 
And then the other guy stands over a killer man costume, but he got shot by someone who ran off in this direction. The killer man is on the floor. Who is the murderer? Who is killer man? Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I talked over you. I'm back. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, just, uh, I guess all the power from her nose went to her heart, essentially, then. <laughs> Pretty much. Strong heart does not mean strong sense of smell. Can't even she seems corner. She smells with her eyes. And apparently hears with her eyes, too, which does not make any sense, but whatever. I'm anyway, happy on the way back. Good, uh, taste or. I guess touch would be the other senses? I'd say if you're touching it, though, you're close enough to get hit by it. Yeah. And taste wouldn't make very much sense either. Anyway, chat, vote now on your phones. Who is the killer? Who is Killer Man? Is it Yorg? Is it uh, Jensen? J no, Jason? I can't read Japanese. Is Killer Man Killer Man? Is it uh, Cunningham? Or is it you, the player? It says, strangeness led you to buy this game. Do you think it's me? Am I the killer? Is it Killer Man? Yes. Who is it? Who could it be? It's got to be me. I'm the killer. The player is the killer. Do me. The choice is irrelevant. <laughs> the choice is irrelevant to the speedrun. If you guess correctly on that, uh, you get a bonus at the end of the stage, but only if you save Yorg. Yorg is currently sort of traveling with us in like sort of like the Final Fantasy dimension pocket thing that these games do. But uh, about halfway through this, he will get kidnapped and we could go save him. And if we save him and we get the correct answer about who Killer Man is, which apparently it's me right now, uh, you would gain one million dollars in bonus cash. If you don't save Yorg, you get no bonus. And we're not saving Yorg because Yorg takes like three minutes to save because he gets kidnapped and winds up on the other end of this extremely large room. The morgue is an incredibly large room. It's kind of a maze that fortunately I know the shortest line through, but it's still pretty big. Uh, and here's a curious region difference. On the Japanese version of this game, the morgue has no music at all. I thought this was a bug with my copy. I seriously, like, sought out, like, another copy of Illbleed to figure out if it was just, like, I had a bad, like, like, did, was my disc just scratched in a particular way that prevents this, like, this track from playing in the morgue? No, it's just not in the JP version. It's just not there. The American what? version has a song there. So you bought two copies of Japanese Illbleed? I didn't buy a second copy. Oh, yeah. yeah. I sort out a comparison unit, though. Anyway, Yorg gets kidnapped. What was that? <gasps> I don't think those were costumes. Or Yorg. Should have taken the helicopter. Were real. Hey! Bye. <laughs> and that's the last we'll see of Yorg. Eriko does not care. Eriko doesn't even react to that happening. She has no input on the situation. So depending on pattern, there can be like hidden scares in the morgue, where like uh, there there again, there killer man's propensity for random, unmarked bits of ground being traps. But on pattern C, which I lucked out on, there are no traps in the morgue at all. None. They just don't spawn. I don't know why. <laughs> but there's just nothing here. I see people in chat are doubting. They think I'm sus. No, I really do have a copy of this game. I don't have two, though. I don't, I don't like, get 50,000 bucks for surviving a 20-minute stage like characters in this game do. This game's expensive. It's rare. It's fun Dreamcast speedrunning tip, actually, by the way. While, I, while we have time, since the morgue is ginormous and empty, uh, Dreamcast discs are a proprietary format called the GD-ROM. This is not the same as a CD-ROM. Like, I think I can talk about this on GDQ stream, even though it's sort of in that direction. But loads of people play Dreamcast games by burning them to a CD-ROM because Dreamcast anti-piracy measures are trivial to circumvent, blah, blah, blah. Uh, CD-ROMs don't load as fast as GD-ROMs, though. So if you're doing speedruns, buy a real copy. It will load faster. You'll save minutes on people loading off CD-ROMs. Like, every single time you, you open the menu, uh, on a CD burned copy of Illbleed, uh, you lose like four seconds because it has to load the menu. On a GD ROM, it's like, like that. That was a good snap. It was. This is also why I bought two copies of The Ring. 
Oh yeah, your first one stopped working, didn't it? Apparently it was my Dreamcast that broke, so I just owned two copies at one point. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations, you own two copies of the ring now. You got on me to own one Dreamcast. copy of the ring. You own two copies too many, and now I own one copy too many. I actually have a copy of Elbleed waiting, by the way. Like, eventually I'm going to play this game. <laughs> Excellent. Maybe but by then I'll have the tutorial finished. I am terrified of the, what, the 18 patterns of levels that you can get throughout this game. Yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't memorize them, though. I wrote them I wrote them down in a way that made sense to me, and then I read them back while I'm playing. The only thing you need to memorize is how to tell which pattern you're on. Anyway, we have reached the end of the morgue. I avoided an enemy encounter there with a bunch of zombies by banking a hard left. And now I get to have my showdown with Killer Man. Also, before Killer that, I just want to say, Yorg is trapped in the morgue. Yeah, Yorg is, Yorg is trapped in the morgue, and we're not saving him. He is dead to us forever. Uh, Killer Man just decided to fire a ginormous laser beam at me. That is not very nice of him. So what you want to do for the Killer Man boss fight is get close to him, but not too close. That was too close, you see. That was not the gameplay. But I want to do the dodge move, stay around him, but keep baiting him to doing this burst attack. But it's such a range where I will just about be able to dodge in time. He's simply posing at me instead. Oh, no, he's, he's nothing personal, kid. No. I was nothing personal. It was no good. Do the burst attack, get him stuck in the pattern. Can't find the spacing. Difficult. Okay, he missed that hit. Okay, pattern. 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 Yes. No, I'm getting slightly too far. If you get too far away, the pattern breaks. So you gotta, you gotta like, you gotta like keep within the certain distance, and that can be difficult to maintain. Yeah, backstep that. This is better. If he does this attack over and over again, that's better for me because then I don't have to maintain an explicit range. This is much easier to work with. There we go. I shot him to death. He shrugs. He dies. He's dead. We never unearth the truth of Killer Man. Uh, no bonus. Sad, really. Uh, the correct answer, the correct canonical answer, by the way, to the question of who is Killer Man? Uh, Killer Man is Killer Man. You need to say Killer Man is Killer Man. The correct answer, as deduced by Yorg at the end of the stage, is that all the souls of the dead residents of Illbleed uh, possessed a costume and started murdering the staff as revenge. How you are supposed to intuit this, I don't know. It, it isn't logical, but that is the solution. And if you get the correct solution, one million dollars for you. And then you can buy the six hundred fifty dollar ramen bowls. You can you can buy everything at that point with that cash. Anyway, Toy Hunter, the final standard stage. This is the most unusual stage because it repurposes the mechanics of the game once again to do com something completely different. You is not a right answer to the Killer Man conundrum. No, there is only Killer Man. So we get a gun, we get a horror monitor. Uh, this guy pops out of the ticket booth to greet us. He's very polite, very friendly member of staff. Just wants to give us our ticket. Uh, I rudely do not want to interact with strangers. I have no idea how I whiffed that hit. I get my entrance ticket. And I enter the attraction of Toy Hunter, where I have to specifically feed my entrance ticket into the door for some reason. I already paid for entry, man. Anyway. That happens. We are now Cork. A strange Indiana Jones slash Woody from Toy Story crossover analog type thing. The next part of this cutscene that I'm now skipping is a tutorial, because the game has to re-tutorialize me on the penultimate stage of the video game. They have now repurposed the trap mechanic so that when traps are triggered, it doesn't uh, result in a scare. It results in story events, sometimes. I'm going to skip a majority of these because the total runtime of the cutscenes is like 25 minutes. But I will summarize events. Cork returns home from an expedition uh, to his loving wife thing called Sexy Doll. It's, it's, it's the doll over there with a giant ass. Like, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Moving swiftly on from that. Uh, but the child who owns him uh, dies. We would see this cutscene of this child's eyes just bugging out and exploding. Also, there are some boobs here. I do not know why. The child is now dead. The 
the child is dead, and the child is buried with Sexy Doll. Sexy Doll is alive, but when a toy is buried with a dead child, they go to toy hell, as it turns out. So Cork is now on a journey to go to hell. Because he wants to be reunited with his Sexy Doll. Uh, this part of the stage has actually regular traps, and is the first part where I can actually work out what pattern I'm on, and I need to pay attention because they're all invisible. The stage sucks. Uh, okay, not pattern A, because it's not that. Actually, it can still be pattern A. Uh, this is always guaranteed if it's not the first bend. Pattern C has been eliminated. Is it second bend or third bend? Do, 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 do. Gotta check them all. Gotta check them all. Okay, that's pattern B. Okay. Now I know what pattern I'm on. I must advance through the graveyard. Cork, in it, uh, currently in this life, he's feeling a bit listless, right? He doesn't know he needs to go to Toy Hell right now. He's just, he's mourning the loss of his sexy doll. It was taken away from him cruelly, I might add. Terrible, really. But he doesn't know what to do, so he spends his time moping about a graveyard. I need to tag something here, and it's not letting me, because the game is, okay, whatever, the game's being awkward, let's just roll with it. If I get hit, I get hit, deal with it. Avoid the encounters. There's always a fight inside this soul on this pattern. It is unavoidable. It's <gasps> monkeys. <gasps> monkeys are fast and they hit surprisingly hard. They're actually a total pain. That's uh, natural that we think of when we think of graveyards, yep. right? <laughs> yep, monkeys, man. They try and kill you. Just the graveyard apes. That was actually a pretty good escape. I didn't take much damage at all. Oh, this is a good graveyard. I'm avoiding stuff. Hey, hey. Good effort. Okay, so normally uh, there would be a story event here, again it takes too long, where I would arrive at this kid's grave and uh, an evil-looking Sonic the Hedgehog would show up to tell me. That is not me, like, making a live comment about his appearance. It's an evil Sonic the Hedgehog. You'll see. I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep that from you forever. Evil Sonic the Hedgehog shows up to taunt you and go, ha ha, I have your sexy doll. So now we have to advance through the city. Uh, I don't know why I'm tagging that, that's wrong. la di da di da okay. Tag both the fights here. I don't know which one is it. it's in. It changes depending on pattern, but I need to tag these two because if I do that, I start on the escape and I can just pound a B and get the hell out of dodge. Avoid a fight encounter here, I think, by banking hard left. Yes, good, good stuff. Yep. Good stuff. Avoid this fight. Oh, don't get stuck on a post now. And we enter the egg bar. Because we want to drink some eggnog, I think. They couldn't get away with doing alcohol in this game. That's the, that's the one thing they couldn't do. Uh, so we get into a fight with eggs in this bar. I'm not going to do that. It happens in a story event, and that encounter takes too long, so I'm going to skip it by walking around it. But we get into a fight with eggs in an egg bar. Uh, we murder them. We are now going to jail. Cork has been arrested because he murdered some dudes in a bar brawl. But, but they're eggs. They're eggs, but we killed them. They're dead, the dude. Cops eggs? The cops are not eggs. The cops are people. Oh. They arrested toys. We're going to toy jail. We're going to Alka toys. That is also not a joke. <laughs> That is not me. I'm not telling jokes. This is completely serious. I, I would not joke about Ilbley. I never knew it was called Alcatoys. It's called Alcatoys. I can show you. I can show you. I would like to see They made a logo like, for it. It's optimal. They made I, a I, logo I... for it. Like, what is taste? Ilbley doesn't know. Is Cork going to swim the however many miles to escape Alcatoys? Uh, no, we'll escape via a different way. Anyway. We are going to our judgment here. We'll go on trial. I'm going to tag the story event here. Uh, where we are sentenced to death. We are sentenced to the death penalty. By, like, the toy death penalty. See? Alka toys. Alka toys. Shh, Alka toys. Huh. Couldn't make it up if I tried. My hair is in my face. I don't know how you manage the long hair thing, dude. Tied behind my head. Whereas I've got quarantine hair. I'm not used to this life. My hair wants to be free. Oh, that's the wrong place. Also, I have to ask, were, were the eggs just like standard eggs you find in like breakfast? Or were they like 
Egg They're like rolling you? eggs with hands. It's weird and creepy, but I've managed to avoid every encounter with an egg so far. So anyway, like we're in jail. Reasons. Uh, we're, we're in jail, and we meet a guy, a little spaceship-looking dude, who tells us that we also can go to toy hell. We just need to die. And it's like, well, great, we're sentenced to the death penalty anyway. Let's go die. So that's our current goal. Yep. So we'll give the friend some gasoline so he can get himself out of the wall. I've kind of done this in the wrong order because you give him the gasoline and then he tells you, oh, but if you die, you'll go to Toy Hell and then you can be reunited with your sexy doll. Woohoo! Aren't I a great guy for telling you all of this? Blah, blah, blah. Yep. So we give him the gasoline and that opens the door to our execution. And now we proceed with glee to our execution. But remember, we, we skipped the cutscene that said this, but Cork was sentenced to death by hanging. The game expects you to remember that because it will present you with various methods of execution and punish you if you pick the wrong one. So it first presents us with uh, with the guillotine. We were not sentenced to death by guillotine, so we got to run by it. Uh, death by electric chair. No, that's not us either. This is not our stop. Ah, death by hanging. There it is, there it is. So we skip the story event where Pododon, the spaceship-looking dude, comes in and interrupts us in our mid-execution, and we fall down all the way into the sewers. At this point, Cork is like, what happened? I was supposed to die, but that guy, like, totally interrupted my, my death. I wanted to go to toy hell. This sucks. So now he's mad. And he's trying to escape the sewers, but he's mad about it, because he, he wanted to die. I need to tag some skulls in the water here. Toy Story really got dark near the end, didn't it? Yeah, they, the Toy Story 4 went weird places, dude. The tie-in video game I'm playing here. Okay, but then in the cutscene coming up, Pododon reunites with Corp and explains that no, if you died, you'd go to regular hell, not toy hell. Regular hell won't have sexy doll, but toy hell will. In order to go to toy hell, you need to find a kid and kill him so that you are buried with him. That way you can go to toy hell. So we are now looking to murder a child. So we have arrived at a rundown, less fortunate neighborhood. Uh, where a child has written a note on a giant billboard that says he wants this doll toy hunter to Santa Claus. The toy which means which means me is the doll of toy hunter. My house is the second floor of the apartment without thinking a mistake. Jeremy. In Japanese. Yeah, this is it's a Japanese game. The English version of this hasn't fixed the... Uh, the signage in this area is something. Caution! Recently, ghosts and so on increase in this town. As for the children, to be careful. Anyway, the child we want is in this window. Uh, we are now in this child's... We're now in this child's room. We're in his bedroom. He takes us. He wanted He wanted a toy hunter door, right? So we put our friend's memory back inside a different body of the same type. This cutscene might be slightly long, but I'm going to let it play out anyway because I, you guys need to see child murder. You made it through the tunnel, Cork. I even found my new owner. Look at that kid. What the? That's not the kid I was talking about. He's healthy as hell. You can't meet with sexy doll until you get buried in a coffin. Oh, yeah, you're right. We found a healthy kid, uh, not a sick kid. What would you do without me? Unfortunate. So they quickly decide on murder. That's it. Here, we can use this and shoot that kid. We're going to shoot the kid to death with a gun. I mean, we already have a gun, but we need, like, a bigger gun. You're going to use this? We're not going to kill him for real. Just knock him unconscious with this. We're going to make people think he's dead. Use this and shoot that kid. He just looks at us the now whole time chance. while we do this. Shoot him. Me? I'm the one to shoot him? Now's the chance. Shoot him. We should have given an epilepsy warning for that. Sorry. Jeremy! What happened? It's... Jeremy! 
Oh. <laughs> and the stairway to his funeral opens. We're very pleased with murder. <laughs> anyway, we killed a child called Jeremy. He wanted a Toy Hunter doll. That's all he wanted. It was his favorite doll, so we get buried with him. That uh, We killed him, though. So we go straight to Toy Hell for our actions. This is perfect for our purposes. We are now in Toy Hell just like we wanted. The action of killing that kid has no consequences and in fact further advances our goal. So now we need to defeat uh, Sonic the Hedgehog in order to get back our sexy doll. He is the boss of this stage. He drops rings when shot and I gotta destroy the rings so we can't, can't get them back. Like this, it is literally, it is literally Sonic. They call it Zonic with like a Z, but it's, this is, I'm fighting Sonic the Hedgehog, man. On the Dreamcast. You ever just play a game where Sonic the Hedgehog is a boss monster? I did, oh, the spin dash is invincible. Yeehaw. Can't hit him while he's doing that. I gotta shoot him in the kneecaps. Oh, I'm shooting him instead of the rings. That's not what I want. Please do not step on me. That is bad. All of his attacking animations are 100% invincible, which is super annoying. Please do not pose at me. Man. Come on. Let me shoot you in the knee. There we go. So you pretty much have the oddest crossover of Woody from Toy Story fighting Sonic the Hedgehog. With a little bit of Indiana Jones mixed in. It's implied that, like, Cork just came back from some sort of, like, excavation-type trip. Like an Indiana Jones-type character. Movie. Anyway, I destroyed all his rings, so he shuts down. And Cork reunites with his sexy doll. Woohoo! I won! I won! Darling, you're wonderful! <laughs> My dear sexy doll. <laughs> the rest of that cutscene is sort of meta stuff where the park employees go, oh, the Sonic thing is messing up. Oops, oops, oops. That cutscene goes on for quite a while, so I kind of abridged it quickly there. The sexy doll's the funniest part, I promise. I have, why does sexy doll have to be mounted to the, like, four feet thing while Cork gets multiple legs? It can't move, it only has to bounce. Anyway, we're on the final level of the game. Yeah, the, the, that, that doll's actual name is Sexy Doll. It's, it doesn't have a name, it's just Sexy Doll. We're now on the final boss encounter of the game. Uh, the final boss of this game, I actually get a choice of boss encounters. This is the only game I know that gives you a choice of final bosses. I get a choice between an enemy called, like, the Bull Stinger, who is a reference to this development studio's previous game, and an enemy called, oh no man, he is impossible. Uh, and the Dollar Spider that we didn't fight properly in the Cashman level, he is the easiest fight and the fastest fight, so that's the one we're doing. I cannot beat oh no man on fresh file with a, like, a no upgraded error code. Oh no man is impossible. He hits really hard and is very quick. So while we have you on the uh, the final boss here, I can just take a moment to ask if you have any uh, shout outs you'd like to give to anywhere. Uh, I think I want to give a shout out to at least uh, Nigleria, who started the, the the groundwork of routing Illbleed that I built off quite a lot. Because he, he realized before I did that there were like a couple of patterns per stage. I'm the one who kind of like really hammered it out. So thank you. Thank you very much. I, I built off at least a little bit of the groundwork there. I didn't build this completely from scratch, but Illbleed is a game with like three runners. So uh, a, a lot of it is mostly just my invention. <laughs> but at least at least one guy gave me a hand with this. So thank you very much. Look, avoid this. So we want to we want to put distance between this guy and us as much as possible when shooting him because that way he won't try and attack us as much. He has to be within a certain range to do his little jump attack. Keep my distance, shoot him down. Uh, when he goes on the ceiling, I've got to shoot his little spider dudes that also have his gross face on it. This attack is unique to this fight, by the way. It's not in the Cashman version of this. Uh, 
and he also drops acid from the ceiling. That does a lot of damage. Time will be coming up when I lose control after killing a ginormous spider. I'm gonna take a blood hit on this one. Nope, I will. Punch him to death! Punch him! Punch him! Get him! Yeah! Killed him by punch him. If you have no weapon, you do this goofy little punch. And that will be time. That is time. Great job. A little clap there myself. <laughs> Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Excellent. Right, Wait. Ending, so. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had this much excitement in a long time. <laughs> very well then. I shall present you with one hundred million dollars. One hundred million dollars. And here for the fanfare is the Michael Reynolds Orchestra. Behold the Michael Reynolds Orchestra. The finest animation that looping gifts can provide. They're like they're not even distinct. They're, they're the same people. Paste it over and over again. I'm a man of my word. We yeah. win the one hundred million dollars. It's raining money. It's raining money. imagine it falling all around myself. One hundred million dollars. I would pick up the money. Congratulations. Do you know how many spiders that can make? Infinite spiders. I would bask in one hundred million dollars, pick it up and think, I'm British, I can't use this. Damn. <laughs> and that is Oblead. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This run is great. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, Oblead is one of those games that uh, I... I just know it's pretty underground, so being able to show it off is great. It was great having you. And as a uh, follow-up question, uh, where can people find you if they want to watch more Punchy? You can find me at twitch.tv slash punchy. It's just just the one word. Uh, I do little speed speedruns from time to time. Sometimes I do rerouting stuff. If you enjoyed this, please, by all means, grace me with a follow, because I do lots of weird horror games like this. I'm very, uh, I'm very... Pleased, proud, humbled, appreciative, various words of uh, being included in this debut episode of Speedruns from the Crypt is like the perfect thing for my kind of, this is my kind of jam, this is my place, I live here now. It's fun stuff. I, I've enjoyed what I've, I've enjoyed. I enjoyed the first, I enjoyed uh, the Onimusha run that came before. I've, I've never oh. seen a run of that game before. It was very fun, and this is a pretty good follow-up. We have a lot of good runs on deck today. I'm uh, really glad I wanted to debut this. I'm really glad I got yeah. to show the audience only. I love this game a lot. It is a game I was uh, considering a lot, especially going back to the Halloween Hoppix recently. But I didn't want to do it there. I wanted to save it for the debut episode. Yeah. It's a good choice. It's a good choice. Yeah. Nothing like yeah. it. Oh, nothing like it. Mwah. That being said, uh, we're going to be moving on to our next game. Before that, we're going to take a brief ad break. Uh, so uh, if you are still here and would like to avoid the ads, uh, feel free to subscribe to Game Sun Quick. Uh, this will get you ad free viewing and it does support the Hopic shows, uh, which happen all throughout the year uh, with the support of viewers like you. Uh, we're going to be going right back to that. So uh, sit calmly, grab a drink, and yeah, we'll be right back. Bye bye. And we are back. Welcome back, everyone, to Speedruns from the Crypt, the new GDQ Hopic show. So, last we left, we had Punchy running Ill Bleed, which we had to take a, a fun uh, ride through the amusement park with a bunch of, uh, <laughs> let's just say, very obscure references and happenings there. Uh, our next game is going to be a little bit more, uh, let's just say static, a little bit more still, kind of like a picture, if one might say. Uh, we're going to be going back to uh, some Japanese lore while we take a look at a game called Fatal Frame, which will rely heavily on something called the Camera Obscurus, uh, which will allow us to see the various ghosts uh, which threaten to harm us. Uh, our hero tonight uh, for this game will be Maxi Lobes, who will be running Fatal Frame. Anyway, take it away. Hello, hello. Uh, uh, hope we're all doing well. We're all doing well. Uh, uh, the ill bleed was the a bleed was pleasure a to watch. Pleasure to watch. So shout outs to so Punchy. Shout outs to Punchy. Super fun run. Super fun run. Uh, but yeah, welcome uh, but yeah, to welcome Fatal to Frame. Fa 
fun fact. Uh, just got the world record for this last night. <laughs> so, uh, big thanks to Dysis for having me on the show and making me de-rust the game to then two days later just get world record. This game ain't easy to get record in, so I was, I'm just basically flexing. I'm basically just... Yeah, saying... Uh, I was saying yesterday, see, now it's our world it's record. It's our world record. <laughs> our world record, because it motivated you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, just I just want just flexing. Just flexing. 111.16. Hey, it's well-deserved. It's well-deserved. Um, but yeah, this is Fatal Frame. I will be running the just standard straight, any percent run. Uh... And, uh, yeah, I'll explain everything as I go through it. Uh, so let's, uh, count it down, I guess. Let's do, uh... Over it? Do a count of five. Five, four, three, two, one. Again. I wonder how long... So, Fatal Frame. Uh, called That's Project Zero in pretty much everywhere else in the world. It's just called Zero in Japan. So if you're thinking, you know, this game looks familiar, I don't think it's called Fatal Frame. Well, that's because it's named many different things. Um, and it is 100% totally based on a true story, and that is not just the... Uh, not just the team behind the game really just hoping to sell a lot of copies in North America by absolute debating you. Why would they do that? That's that's tomfoolery. Don't ever think that. This actually happened. Um, so, this is Mufuyu. Uh, he is not super important to the run or the gameplay. You just kind of play him for a couple of minutes. In fact, you play him for a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, but he is important to the story, of course. Mafuyu is Miku's brother. Her older brother. Uh, he went into this spooky mansion looking for his favorite uh, novelist, Jinsei Takamine. And upon entering the mansion, he, fi he finds out some really messed up stuff and also has the camera obscura with him, which, of course, is the tool we're using tonight to find all the bad ghosties and take pictures of them in order to exercise their souls and stuff. It's weird. It's weird stuff, but it's really cool. Um, so that's Mufuyu. Yeah, bye, Mufuyu. He's really slow. If you thought, like, dang, these characters move slowly, Miku's a little faster. Don't worry about it. But yeah, this is Miku, and there's, there's one of the scary ghosts. Uh, this is the sister, and she goes into the mansion looking for her brother, who was looking for that his favorite novelist. And yeah, it's a big wild goose chase, and during the goose chase, you find out, you know, what happened to the mansion, what happened to the Himuro family, and, and whatnot. You know, some really crazy stuff happened here, so... You know, it is Thanksgiving, so family is very important. Exactly. You're you're right, Ecdysis. Shout outs there. shout outs to the Hamero family. Got like a nice house. This is the Thanksgiving game and uh Old Bleed was the Black Friday game. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Friday game? Well yeah, it had the killer department store with all the oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. deals and <laughs> You're right. So, this is how the camera obscura works. Uh, you are just able, just in general, the camera obscura allows you to take pictures of things that you can't see with your own eyes. Um, so, it's used a lot to uncover clues uh, as to where you need to go next. It's actually a very smart way of progression. It's a good mixture of, hey, I'm picking up this item that I need to use, and then, you know, the other half of the things you do is taking pictures, telling you where to go and whatnot. It's, it's yeah, it's smart. Um, but anyways, let me explain a little bit about 
the, you know, the main feature of the camera obscura is being able to take pictures of the ghosts. And this is the main form of combat in the game. You know, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, all of the Resident Evil clones in the late 90s, like they all did combat very similarly. Whereas the team at Tecmo at the time was like, well, we're going to think outside of the box. And we're going to allow the player to fight ghosts with cameras. It's, it's, it's super cool. This game came out in like 2001, so it's pretty, you know, pretty original stuff. Uh, so right there is the very first ghost fight. And as you can see, um, it, it's pretty simple. Like, it's, it's not very complicated. You aim the camera, you charge up your shot, and the longer you charge up the shot, the more damage it does. Um, but the one thing that you probably saw that was a little interesting is that your camera is either going to glow blue or it's going to glow like an orangey reddish. And that orangey reddish is actually the ghost giving you a very small opportunity at what we call a fatal frame or a zero shot. So that does extra damage. And I won't be using that feature very often because it's actually much slower in the run to just keep on doing fatal frames because there's this very long animation of the ghost, uh, you know, writhing in ghostly pain from unwanted pictures. So we're gonna avoid those super long animations and... Ah! <laughs> Uh, it is it is a horror show. <laughs> I am so mean. Why did I do that? I hope no one actually got scared. It's that's like the it's the funniest jump scare though because you know, Koji is just freaking out about the ropes, the ropes. There he is again. <laughs> so I'm going to do something very cheeky here. I'm gonna take a picture of Koji and then I'm gonna go up to him. I almost hit my split button. And then it's going to allow me to take another photo. And then I'm going to move back away from him, and the game is going to allow me to take another photo. This is what we call the quick shot method, and it is the most important and probably coolest tech in the entire Fatal Frame series as a, as a speedrun. Um, so the way that that actually works is that when you take a picture of a ghost, there is a cooldown. That cooldown will not allow you to take another picture of the ghost uh, for... It, it, it varies upon ghosts, but some of them take like five seconds for you to actually take another picture. And after the three to five seconds, it might teleport to a different area, so you can't just stay aimed in that one direction. So the way that we avoid that is the quick shot method where we actually reset the ghost's animations. If you take a picture of a ghost and then walk up to it in camera mode, the ghost will reset its animation. It will want to attack you. And during the attack, the camera also allows you to take a photo. It resets, there is no cooldown. So you are constantly uh, walking into ghosts to bait out attacks and then also walking away from them in order to bait out different movement. So, you know, when you go farther away from them, they end up going into a more uh, free kind of roaming situation. Okay. So this fight is a little bit slow. This ghost is a little bit of an inside joke, by the way. We call him Marilyn Manson. Uh... I, I don't know why. Somebody in the community, like, years ago, I don't know who it was, but was calling this ghost Marilyn Manson, and I just kind of went with it. That's that's just, that's it. It's Marilyn Manson. Anyways, uh, that was actually a pretty bad fight because I wasn't able to get the quick shot off. As you saw, I took a picture of the ghost and I walked forward, and the game did not give me the quick shot method. Therefore, I was actually a little too late. You see the resemblance? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is, is it the resemblance? You know, is it the fact that he has extremely long arms? I don't, I don't know which one it is. Uh, but that's, that's his name. So yeah, I, I will most likely be pointing out when 
very good quick shot attempts happen, and when sometimes they don't, and I've messed up. But here's the thing. You know how I mentioned before I started the run while I was flexing my world record that I got last night? Uh, you know how I said this game is very hard to get world record in? That's because the the chances of actually getting a quick shot are all dependent on what patterns you get for the ghost fights. And I I'm not even I'm not joking when I say this. But there are hundreds of variations of ghost fights you can get in a speedrun of Fatal Frame. So a part of being very good at this game is also being able to improvise when you get different patterns. Some ghosts have two or three patterns that you'll encounter often. Some have six or seven that you'll encounter often. The pattern that I'm talking about is what direction does the ghost move upon spawning? What direction does the ghost uh, go after you've actually started attacking it? Uh, will it attack you? Will it teleport? Will it move a different direction than what it was going when it first spawned? It's it's insane how many different variants of fights you will get in this game. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I'll try and point out some of the crazier patterns that we might get in the run. But, um, yeah, just letting so, you guys so, know. Uh, now that you got the uh, world record, I guess, uh, a fitting question would be, what got you into running Fatal Frame? What got me into it? I, I guess, uh... I guess when I started speedrunning, like, in general, I, I was definitely into the horror genre. I was running, like, Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3, Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 1 Remake. I just kind of drifted towards horror games, and... I suppose the reason I picked this up was because I saw a runner uh, by the name of Speedword. I saw his runs almost split again. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, you know, this looks like a very interesting run. Uh, a little bit different from, you know, the games that I was running at the time. Silent Hill and Resident Evil both are pretty similar for the most part. Uh, you know, run to point A to point B using weapons for combat, you know, guns and melee, and uh, just solving puzzles. But there was an interesting kind of vibe to Fatal Frame where... The movement was a lot more specific. It's not tank controls, it's uh, it's fixed camera angles with the directional input. Uh, the camera was just this way different... It's a much different way of handling combat, uh, obviously, casually and in a speedrun. Uh, and I just felt like there was something very interesting there that uh, I would enjoy running it. And after watching Speedword, I kind of picked it up. Uh, watched Alien's world record. He was the world record holder at the time, which, by the way, Alien and I, very good runner Alien of Fatal Frame games in general. He, uh, he and I have traded world record six times now. Uh, that's a lot. That's, that's, it's probably the healthiest rivalry I've ever had in speedrunning. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, shoutouts to Alien for, uh, pushing not only the game so far down and putting a lot of work into it, but also, uh, you know, for getting me to compete with him and also improve at it. Uh, yeah. It's always nice to see a game with a rich history. It has an interesting history for sure. I, I think... I think most of the, uh, I think a lot of the Fatal Frame speedrunning community can agree that um, a lot of the a lot of the old boy speedrunners of Fatal Frame definitely uh, definitely are responsible, obviously, for the general interest. But I think Speedword is really the person who got the game going. He he added all the categories. He ran all of the categories and. You know, put up good times, encouraged other people to run, post, posted his runs to YouTube, you know, made a forum, you know, and, and guides and stuff, so. Oh, that is, you know what? That's great. You know, moving on to something completely not serious and totally, uh, totally off topic of what I'm talking about. Yes, that is not a bold spot. 
it looks like a bald spot. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times people have said, is that a bald spot? No, she is not balding. Uh, she has like a brooch hair clip thingy in her hair. And it's, uh, it's yeah, it's a good meme. <laughs> it's a really good meme. Now I can't unsee it. It's, it's true, yeah. You, you really can't. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I, I hate it. <laughs> I do, too. Um, yeah, no, if, if I am reading chat, there's a lot to explain kind of at the beginning of the run, because, you know, got to explain the mechanics and whatnot and get the bases. Yeah, down. get the bases down. So y'all you're all in the same picture, you know, that's that didn't come out right. Same picture. I am. I'm in pun mode now. What happened to me? Oh, uh, they'll start coming with this game. I know this game very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I did run this uh, at HDQ earlier this year. So, uh, if any of you were watching that, you you know how many pun donations there were. Um, so. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what though? It's, there. It happens. It happens. Same thing. Fun run, it was a fun run. Same thing with the, the Devil May Cry run that I did too. A lot of puns. Uh, also, these are numbers, and they go counterclockwise. So if you ever play this game casually on the PS2 and you're like, "What? How do I even know what numbers these are?" That's all I gotta know. It's just one through nine counterclockwise. There you go. Thank me later. Which means yes, I don't. I don't know how to read any Japanese whatsoever. I just have the muscle memory down. It's just how it goes. Here's Tomoe. Tomoe two. This is the second Tomoe fight. This is a great example of how patterns can really change up the way that these fights work. This is the worst pattern. She's going this direction. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll kind of keep my distance. Just let her do her own thing. No, no point in risking uh, failing any quick shots and whatnot, and having her attack uh, because she's going that direction. The best pattern is when she goes towards this door over here. She goes towards the path of the door, and uh, it's it's a great opportunity for quick shots as well. And the difference in getting a bad fight there, which is what you saw, and a good fight is anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds, uh, which is huge. Ah, oh, we didn't get the random flying spider monkey thing. Uh, it's like a random creature that flies at you and stuns you for two seconds, and I was hoping to get it because it's kind of funny. But we didn't get it because, you know, the game felt bad about Tomoe 2, and it's like, okay, I'll give you the two seconds. Also, yes, puzzles. These are the puzzles. We'll be doing quite a few of those. And again, I, I can't I can't read any of this stuff, so I just it's just muscle memory. You know? It's like X left, X left, X left, or like left X, left X, right X. You get the point. And this is a terrible spawn for Mr. Takamine, which means I'm actually going to have to run very far away. Because the way that this... Hello? What are you doing? Sir. The way that this ghost works is uh, when you're very far away from Mr. Takamine, it is less likely that he'll move around. So you want to get a lot of distance and just kind of charge up the damage. She's doing a great job at avoiding. And now he's going to do this. Which is going to lead to him trying to do a very uh, annoying attack where he makes everything very, very dark. Yeah, it looks like he was thinking really hard. He did it. The madman did it. Good lord. I can't see this man. Oh, there it is. Perfect.
perfect example of a fight going very, very wrong. But that is all. That is it. It's a classic uh, marathon luck, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that, that was... <laughs> I mean, that was pretty bad. <laughs> but that's okay. Fortunately, uh, the route in this game is pretty safe. As long as you know where, like, the backup items are. And you also re you regain health every single night. So uh, this game is kind of sectioned up into nights. Night one, two, three, and four. Uh, the first night in the speedrun is actually quite short. We're, ab we're about to finish it as, as we uh, do this quick little puzzle here. And then night two is the longest. So right there, we get to regain our health. So don't have to worry about that. My hands. She has some extremely looking PlayStation 2 hands. Very much so. Uh, it's it's actually, it's quite funny, the, the difference between Fatal Frame 1 and Fatal Frame 2. Fatal Frame 2 has uh, exceptional quality. Everything about it is a huge improvement over the first game. All right, Marilyn Manson is back. not causing as many problems as last time. Which is nice. Thank you, Marilyn Manson. I appreciate it. And for those who are wondering, like, you know, what, what is the Fatal Frame series like? Uh, there are six games in the Fatal Frame series. There's uh, Fatal Frame 1, Fatal Frame 2, Crimson Butterfly, Fatal Frame 3, The Tormented, Fatal Frame 4 Lunar Eclipse thingamabobber, I'm forgetting the name, then Fatal Frame 5, uh, Maiden, of, Maiden of Blackwater, and, and then they've got the remake of 2, which is exclusive to the Wii. A lot of those games I just mentioned are exclusive to Nintendo. And then a spin-off game called uh, Spirit Camera. You know, they tried. Was that the ghost of... No, that was the ghost of Zonic, actually. It was just <laughs> in the last uh, speed run that you witnessed here. Oh, not Zonic. Oh, no. He dropped his rings. To be quite honest, the Fatal Frame series is very good. I do encourage people to try it out, uh, especially if they have a PS3, because if you have a PS3 and you just hook it up to the internet, you can actually get Fatal Frame 1, 2, and 3 on the PlayStation Network for pretty cheap compared to physical copies, because we know how physical copies of PS2 games are getting nowadays. <laughs> Mr. Rule of Rose over here at Dysis. Yeah, it was a bit pricey for my hair. I just got it sent to me, but apparently it is worth a lot of money. It is a tough run. Oh, yeah. I don't know why PlayStation 2 games went so high up. Even the Silent Hill games are like hundreds of, I think like at least $100 these days. Yeah, it's nuts. I got my Silent Hill 2 Greatest Hits copy for 20 bucks. I think my copy of Silent Hill 2 about the same. Yeah. Now, no. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy how uh, pricey games like these are getting. Uh, which is, which you know, is, is a huge reason why if you're able to purchase them digitally, it's it's huge. It's it's good for not only preserving, you know, the game. 
for people to play, but um, it's actually cheaper. <laughs> it's I, I'm not even kidding. It's actually cheaper to find a discounted PS3, get the three games on PSN, than get physical copies of them in the series. So right here, I was actually doing a bit of a YOLO strat, where I uh, I just I just book it. I just run and try to open the door because this ghost right here is the my eyes lady. She got no eyes. She had him stabbed out by a mask in a ritual because, you know, rituals are some hardcore stuff. Uh, so, yeah, she can't see, but she can hear really well. So when you run, she knows where you are and she just she just books it right towards you and does pretty substantial damage. So, uh, yeah, you can either YOLO it and just run and hope that she misses, or you can do something we like to call the stutter step strat. Uh, I will be showing off the stutter step strat a little, in a little while. I'll definitely be pointing it out before it happens, but it looks really fun. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the ghosts in this game, like I said earlier, there's hundreds of variants of fights, but the ones that you don't fight, the ones that are optional, most of them have fixed, like, a lot of them have fixed spawns. Uh, the ones that you do encounter every time you do a run. Uh, and you definitely have the upper edge in terms of uh, avoiding them. In fact, some of them despawn when you enter a different room. When you go into the next room, and I—it's—it's I, I, it's just because the game, I guess, is just being very nice to you. Like right now, there's music playing right now because a ghost spawned, but the game is being really nice and automatically despawns it when I go into this room with this puzzle. I guess to not overwhelm the player because this game is difficult. I know a lot of people here have probably played this game and thought to themselves. This is a little difficult, and it's because the ghosts do so much damage, and they can stun lock you sometimes, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty nutty. Pretty nutty. And again, just doing these puzzles based on muscle memory. And this is the first time we get to see our bro. My fool you. God, he even walks slow in the cutscenes. Yeah. He, he really does. I, it's almost like he's enjoying it. He's like, wow, this mansion's nice. I think I'll, 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 think I'll take my time. Yeah, basically, in the story, Miku is constantly following uh, kind of the same path that Mafuyu has taken to uh, uncover the truth behind what happened and whatnot. So there are quite a few cutscenes where Miku thinks she's seeing Mafuyu. And, uh, you know, it's, it's leading her to where she needs to go in order to figure out what's going on here. Okay, and she gave me a bit of a strange pattern. Usually she's a little bit closer, but she decided to stop a little early, which, uh, as you can see, I was trying to walk up to her to get the quick shot attempt, but she was just a little too far away. I couldn't activate the second photo quick enough. But, you know, I was able to improvise. I was able to react because I know that she's going to do the lunge attack. Huge part of knowing how to run this game is reacting to stuff like that. <clears throat> Mufuyu never showers. <laughs> I've learned something today. Twitch chat never changed. It's, uh, I guess it's knowledge is power, huh? Yeah. 
So kind of going into all the, the ghosts and patterns that you mentioned, uh, obviously we'll be going into more nights, but throughout the game, which is your favorite to kind of deal with? Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I, I do think that the, uh, I do think that the My Eyes Lady is the one that is consistent usually, but if she does end up having that small chance of doing some weird stuff, it's pretty interesting what you'll get. But I don't know if she's my favorite. I think my favorite's actually, not my favorite ghost, but my favorite ghost to see what kind of pattern it's gonna give me is Lucky Boy. Uh, oh no, I hate him. So, and Lucky Boy, I will be pointing out in, in a little while. But first, here's that starter stepping I was talking about. It looks ridiculous, I know. But it's because I'm confusing the ghost. You know, she doesn't have eyes, she needs to hear. And I'm tricking the game into thinking that I'm walking the entire time, but I'm actually pressing the run button constantly to kind of make myself go a little faster. And it looks pretty fun. I keep on going to my keyboard to like split. <laughs> Very clean fight. That was that was a good fight, yeah. You can finish her off in three photos, but I needed to uh, I needed to hold the second photo a little longer, a little a little bit more charge. <laughs> You're acting like the ghost to blend in. Yes. It's it's actually so funny. Uh, last night I had <laughs> in the world record run, I actually had a very rare glitch happen, where you spawn in the final night after you skip the cutscene, the opening cutscene, and Miku is completely invisible. Huh. And we were we were joking about how she was the ghost all along, and these these ghosts are actually just normal people trying to live their lives in this mansion. So you did it perfectly. You got the that's never happened before out of the way early. Yes. Do you, yeah, you know what? I didn't even think of that. Okay, so this is a bad pattern. Oh. That's one of the worst patterns you can get is when the lucky boy just kind of doesn't spawn and then waits to spawn. Rafters? Rafters. So that is Lucky Boy, and the reason why I find him so interesting is because he has six different possible patterns. Um, that one you just saw, it, one of the worst ones. One of the worst ones, but not the worst. Uh, that pattern is when uh, he decides to not spawn for a little while, and when he does spawn, he isn't on the rafters. He's, uh, he's actually behind you or to the side of you waiting to initiate an attack. So, I would say that's the second worst. Uh, as opposed to the worst pattern is when he uh, shows up for a little bit and then disappears, waits to spawn, shows up for a little bit, waits to spawn, and kind of does that a few times. Uh, the, the, I mean, an example of the best pattern is when he just shows up either under the stairs or next to the clock, and you just take three photos before he even gets to you, and it's GG. And the difference is, like, it's astonishing, the, the time difference between those two patterns. So... But I find him very interesting, because he, he is the ghost in the game that has the most random uh, movement and spawns and, and such. It's also really weird that he has a uh, mirror piece with him. Uh, yeah. I guess, like, in the story... In the story, 
I think he was playing like uh, Demon Tag, which is basically like a interesting version of hide and go seek. Uh, but for demons. But for demons. And I guess he finds a piece of the mirror. And then he's like, I have to go give this to that man. Then he gets sucked into a camera. And then he gets sucked into a camera, yes. <laughs> he did not win Demon Tag. He lost the game of Demon Tag. Absolutely lost. And, and no re, no re. GG, no re, too. No rematch. Exactly. Stuck in you the failed camera. the only rule of Demon Tag. Don't get sucked into the camera. Get one rule. So that was a perfect fight, by the way, on the uh, My Eyes Lady. That is the quick shot in action right there to, to its full potential. Um, you know, taking a photo, get, getting a nice fully charged photo, getting another charged photo, doing the quick shot, and then bait the, the attack that you bait to get that third quick shot. Oh, I did. Um, to get that third quick shot, you then capitalize on that attack uh, and get the fatal frame to do the last bit of damage to finish her off. So, and that's a pretty consistent fight. Uh, one of the only My Eyes fights in the game that is consistent. Um, there is another consistent fight, but the consistent strat is slower than the let's try and get Reki strat, so. So, Maxu, are you saying that that fight was picture perfect? Absolutely picture perfect. Everybody gets one, as we learned earlier. <laughs> Everybody gets one. <laughs> and it was a good one. It was, it was. Yes, this... <laughs> yes, it's Pokemon Snap. The, uh... The very twisted sequel. Oh no, now chat's starting Oh with no. The exposure. We opened the floodgates. We did. So this ghost that's attacking me right now is the Brokeback Woman. She can either grab you or she can swipe at you. She gave me a swipe, which is good. We don't lose time. We only just lose a little bit of health. If you get grabbed, you lose about three seconds. It's unfortunate. But she was, she was nice. She just gave me a swipe. And yes, the I call her the broke back woman because she has literally broken her back and she cannot get up. Oh. And she becomes she becomes ghost. Fortunately for her, she does not need to use her back anymore in the in the afterlife. She can just float around. But now we're about to fight Yae, uh, who is the mother of one of the children who is playing Demon Tag. Uh, and the wife of the folklorist, who will also be fighting later on. And this fight is very specific. I'm actually going to be pausing here, because pausing here allows me to kind of have a, you know, a little bit of a jump on her into what direction she's going. She's doing a weird pattern right now. She went to the right, and then she did the attack she goes up in the air and drops down. It's a freaking battle right now. Uh, and now she's just gonna lay here. Take some damage. So technically, this is a very slow pattern. Uh, but at least it's safe. So what I was looking for there was uh, I actually needed her to float towards me. That's what I needed, because you can just instantly take a photo and then jibate her into doing her attack animation, which she would get two quick shots out of. And then after the two quick shots, uh, you'd be backing up during those shots. And when you back up far enough, 
she actually starts floating again. So you cancel her attack animation completely. And that's how you would do that fight. But as I said, there are many different patterns in this game that you can get with many, many different ghosts. And she just kind of didn't feel like playing ball, you know? She felt like having a little bit more time in the spotlight. She knows this is a marathon run. She's, she's aware of the show at hand. Indeed. So, Max, I have to ask, in all your time of running Fatal Frame, what was the worst pun you've heard? Because I know you've heard a lot for this game. Uh, there was one during the GDQ run that was the worst. Uh, but I can't quite remember what it was. It was, like, pretty far into the run, where a lot of the puns had been exhausted already. And when the puns get exhausted, you know, it's it's kind of running out of material. Uh, so they go for the real reach on the it. The real reach, yes. Uh, I would have to actually go back and rewatch to figure out which one it was. But, um... Yeah. It, it wasn't just a pun, it was like three different puns in the donation message. So it was a triple threat. It, absolutely. It was devastating. Absolutely. Absolutely devastating. Um, so right here, we're actually in a part of the game where we are required to pick up some masks to solve a puzzle to open this door, which the game is like, please take a picture of this door to know what you're doing, and I'm not going to do that because I know what I'm doing. And hey, that's the folklorist I was talking about. There he is. Sorry, I just captured your wife in my camera. <laughs> my bad, homie. So I'm gonna be picking up a lot of the masks early, simply because it is much more convenient and faster. And I'm going to be putting this mask up. Hello. I'm going to be putting the joyful mask up, and then I'm going to be interacting with the happy mask. And much like the Yae fight, I'm going to play this safe, and I'm going to go and pause the game and increase my camera speed really quick. Just so I have enough time to do these quick shots without her doing some strange pattern. Uh, and it's funny I'm saying strange pattern because she actually did give a pattern that's not common. Uh, her first movement is the movement she will always do at the beginning of the fight. But interestingly enough, she decided to go into the corner of the room that you saw her go into, and usually she goes into the other side towards you, towards Miku. Um, so that fight was only slightly slower than the optimal fight, but it's actually much safer to get that pattern because you uh, you completely avoid debating the attack, and you can just kind of chill and take pictures and still get a quick shot attempt, of course, which you know, is the most important part. Don't mask your skill. Oh, boy. Chat. Oh, is this uh, X left? No, this is left X. Oh, no, I did this correctly. I'm just, I, never mind. Stop listening to me, me and do the, do the puzzle. All right, folklorist time. This guy's kind of, kind of, uh, I like him, though. He's cool. He's actually a really cool part of the story. He just gives really strange patterns. Right now, he's being generous, and he's not doing anything too crazy. And then he starts doing something crazy. He just teleports right in front of you. See, this is... Sir, I am not giving you a hug. Practice social distancing, Mr. Footballist. Look this. Goodness. 
But, you know, that was a fine fight. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with it. He just went in for the hug. And I'm not his buddy guy. <laughs> He's not your guy. He's not my guy, yeah. friend. Uh. uh, please. By the way, a lot of the movement in this game is actually so much harder than it looks. I just want to point that out. Uh, they cheat, like, okay, look at Miku. She, she's not, you know, she's not this insanely large woman, right? But she acts like one. She gets caught on so many different walls, so many different railings. Her hitbox is like this massive rectangle, and and it's it makes movement so difficult because you will get caught on things that you are visibly not getting caught on. It, you are it looks like you are running into an invisible wall. And it's there is no invisible wall, it's just that the hitboxes are so much larger than they seem. Um yeah, it's like a, it's like you know how small dogs act like they're really big sometimes. So like, you you know you need to open the back door like wider because they're like I can't fit through this, and it's like yeah you can. You know I'm I'm a human. I'm looking at it. You gotta trust me. And they're like no. Look at me, human. I'm massive. Open this door wider. And that's yeah that's. The best way I can describe how Miku thinks of herself. And I forgot to pick up that mask after I went through that last door. So I gotta go back and get that. No, I always hate the walk of shame. <laughs> yeah. I was busy explaining how large hitboxes are in the game. Your cat it's so does easy that? just to yeah. forget it, you know? Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah, see, animals, sometimes they just don't understand. No hitbox shaming. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, there are worse hitboxes in the horror genre, especially in the late 90s, early 2000s collection. Uh, we'll even go back to the last run with Obli with some of those uh, fight hitboxes. It's true, yeah. Great example, actually. So, yes, the longer that they're in the frame, the longer you have to charge up your shot, which means the more damage. But the spirits attack you as long as they spawn, and as long as they spawn, and the little... The, see the little thing in the bottom right? The little thing in the bottom right, if it's glowing orange, that means you are being attacked. You are in a fight with a ghost, whether you like it or not. Your choice is to either run or fight, but some ghosts you cannot run from because the game, it, it makes you fight ghosts in order to progress. It's not like Resident Evil or Silent Hill where a lot of the enemies you can just run by and you don't have to worry about any of them except for boss fights. It's not like that. In Fatal Frame, you are forced to fight ghosts. So they will attack. No, RC, it's not that one. It, it, it was like a tr it was literally like three puns in a row. It was devastating. It was towards the end of the run. Here's the folklorist again. And it looks like he is being really nice, actually. So he's gonna spawn one more. Oh, never mind. He didn't give me the quick shot, which is surprising. And now he'll probably he's not giving me the quick shot, sir. So there's a, there's a certain animation I'm looking for. And the, the weird thing about Folklorist is that it looks like he'll be giving you the animation, uh, but he actually won't give you the animation. So it looked like I was going to get the quick shot attempt. Uh, and he kind of debated me. But that's okay, because it wasn't a terrible fight. You know, I only got hit once, was able to recover. Yeah, no problem. Always available to answer questions. It's it's not a very complicated uh, game, really. It's it's very straightforward. 
um, much like many other survival horror games, you know, but it's, it's really the controls is what makes it difficult. You know, you're, you're pressing a button to bring up the camera and then you're using the left analog stick to move Miku. And then you're using the right analog or you're using the left analog stick to move the camera and the right analog stick to move Miku. And then you have two different buttons for taking a picture and then using, you know, uh, and then another button for something else that I didn't forget. So it's not really, it's not really a difficult game per se in terms of its mechanics and combat and whatnot. It's just the controls are a little more complicated than maybe you'd be used to in a survival horror game. All right, so there we go. That is uh, the last time we will be fighting the the my eyes lady. She is gone. She had a lot of health there, as you can see. I have to take a lot of pictures of her. Um, uh, and I've actually decided to use a lot of Type 37 film, uh, which I haven't really explained the differences between the films. So I will just look at Kyrie for a moment and explain. Type 14 film is what you start with. It is extremely weak, and you really only use it in the first fight of the speedrun. Uh, afterwards, you switch to Type 37. That is what we use for most of the game. It is the, uh, it is kind of the step up from Type 14. And it definitely does a lot more damage and is probably the film that you will uh, most often use in not only the speedrun, but also the casual experience. Um, the Type 74 film is the second best film in the game and packs quite a punch and you don't find a whole lot of it but you find enough of it to be able to use it quite often uh, especially in night two and three <laughs> and then there's the type 90 film which is insanely strong absolutely decimate ghosts with type 90 film. Uh, it's crazy, but you only get a very, very limited amount. Also, yes, I almost did just press yes on the return to title screen. If you, oh. if you mash the start button too fast and then try to do certain movement that you're used to doing, you will accidentally do that. I'm trying my best to not do that. I'm going to have to stop mashing the cutscene button so quickly. Uh, because there is no continue. If you die in this game, you die. If you accidentally return to the title screen, it's over. Your run is gone. Uh, another very brutal thing about this game, as a speedrun, is that if you die, there is no continue. You can't even practice the rest of the run, even though your run is dead and non-submittable. -sub it's yeah. But those are the types and of films. Well, uh... Night 3 is normally the toughest night in the game, right? I would say night, night 2 is the toughest night in the game. Night 3 is just below Night 2, like barely. The reason why is because Night 3 is shorter and has uh, a lot less to optimize, but some of these ghost fights can be very difficult. Um, like, very difficult. The Family Master is insane. The Family Master has a... It's like a, it's like a crazy, like, combo out of, like, Soul Calibur, right? He takes his sword and he just annihilates you. What is Vape Cloud doing? Sir, Vape Cloud, I'm gonna need you to stop. He's vaping non-vaped areas. This is a non-vaping area, sir. Your existence is not wanted in this hallway. I call him Vape Cloud because that's literally, that's, that's, he's a vape cloud. Like, canon? No. Should it be? Sure. Is there a reason why he kind of got the short end of the stick on this one and turned Supposedly. into a cloud where everyone else became like ghosts? Yeah, yeah, in the lore. In the lore, 
that ghost is so, like, old, he doesn't remember what he looks like. Huh. Yeah. So he just is a vape cloud. I feel like I'd want to remember a better shape than a cloud, though. Like... Like a taco. How? Even just anything with legs. <laughs> are like, not a sentient cloud. I mean, I agree. I, I think he, uh... Probably regrets being a vape cloud. It's like you only get one choice and he chose really early and messed up. Yes, absolutely. So right here, I am going towards the first family master fight. And like I said, he's got like this crazy soul caliber combo move where he like glides towards you and then, you know, hits you with a sword. And then he does like this crazy 360 spin after hitting you a second time. It's, it's crazy. It's he literally goes Yoshimitsu and just annihilates your health. It, it literally, if you have full health, you will be dead if he hits you with these three attacks. Fortunately, it's not insanely hard to like dodge it or anything, but like, yeah, if you're, if you're sleeping and you let him do that to you, it's GG. So, but, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find him for the first time. I've got my Type 74 film. My camera is fully upgraded, which, by the way, the camera upgrades are, a, it's, they're so important. So if you mess up certain ghost fights and you don't get enough points for your camera, uh, the route will be a bit slower. So certain fights do need to go very well. Um, but yeah, let's see what he thinks. Let's see what Family Master thinks of this whole ordeal. He's saying die. It's like a phasmophobia goes. This is where phasmophobia got the spirit box ideas. Just, just die. Because you start yelling, oh. E. But yeah, Family Master was actually being quite nice. That was, that was a pretty standard fight. Nothing to worry about, really. Now I'm actually going to switch to type 14 film really quick. Because we're going to be taking four pictures of things that aren't ghosts. So we are going to preserve some of that ammo. And right there, that's an animation skip. I actually missed out on one earlier in the run because I was getting uh, chased by a ghost and I kind of forgot about it. but. If you pull out your camera, um, as, as like the thunder is hitting, am I doing this wrong? Yes. Uh, if you're, if you pull out your camera, as soon as the thunder hits, you will skip the animation of Miku being like, ah, thunder. It's only like a two second times. So it's really not, it's very minuscule. I'm just used to doing it because every second counts. Trying to get like a really good time. Yeah, the, the whole the whole thing here is that you're supposed to be taking photos of these four, uh, these four um, button configurations, and they may show you the area in which you need to go to find the ghosts that you need to fight. And once you've fought all four, you come back to this and you uh, solve the puzzle. And, and uh, yeah. These ghosts that I'm about to fight are notorious for killing runs. Um, the, you know, the wandering monks is what they are called. Or you can call them the Priesty Boys, because that's more fun. Uh, this is the this is like the the pond priests is what I call them. 
the priest pond priesty. He uh he sucks a lot. Uh, this guy has like three. Is he the? Yeah. What's up? Oh god. I was say is he the worst one? Uh. No. Well, yeah, he is the worst one. But the court, like the the well priest, I would say, is just as bad. The reason why this guy is so bad is because he is the one who hides his head much more often than the other three. And what's so bad about that is because you're on this walkway, right? You're on this walkway on water. And the reason why that's so bad is because you can't walk up to him and jabate him to get, like, quick shots or anything like that. He just hides his head, and then it's like, you know, you're... that's it. You just have to stand there. Um... It's, you're just bleeding time. Even in death, yes, even in death, you too can be a ghost who uh, wastes time. A lot of time. This guy's cool. I like this guy. He's nice. Honestly, he's he's the he's the best priest. He just kind of stands there, tries to do an attack, and then you just kind of chill and easy, easy peasy. But he does have one of like the, the crazier attacks. If you actually if you actually let him do his his his, his like powerful attack, he. Uh, he stuns Miku. And you can't move. And she just aimlessly walks towards the ghost, and then he and then he hits you. It's actually really cool. But obviously not very uh, optimal. <laughs> Return the slab. What's your offer? Uh, so now I have to get a Curse the Cowardly Dog game on here now. Mm. Is there one? I don't even think there is one. I think they actually do exist. I don't see anyone running, but I think they actually do have a couple. That sounds like fun. Yeah. I'm going to Google really quick. Let me get back to you on that. Sounds good. So this ghost is giving me a slightly bad pattern at the moment. But it's not too bad because... He's not like one of the. He's not one of the bad things. He won't actually. You know, he'll waste. He'll waste your time, but he won't mess you up with anything. Um, and now we go towards. Uh, the water room. Now, the reason why this room is extremely significant in the run is because it's possible to get another ghost spawning in the room, as well as the ghost that is supposed to spawn. The random ghost that'll spawn is the Brokeback Woman, um, and she uh, she just randomly spawns sometimes, and you have to fight both of them, and it sucks. And if it happens, well, I mean, it happens. If it doesn't happen, that's awesome. Feels good. She didn't... She, Pog! Poggers! She didn't spawn. And I'm getting a very good pattern on this ghost. She is being awesome right now. Grave five. Yeah, very good. Very, very good. So the pattern that she just gave me was, it is the best pattern you can get. Um, 
she kind of just she what she basically does is she spawns in a little and like kind of like in the middle of the room but oops. she spawns in the middle of the room um but she doesn't float towards you and she doesn't float towards the right because if she floats the, towards the right it makes it so that she goes into the wall and you can't shoot ghosts through walls um so what she did was she spawned and she went to the left and she kind of just drifted. She didn't go, she didn't teleport, she didn't drift into the wall, she didn't try to attack me, she just kind of vibed. She was just vibing. And and I just, yeah, just captured it in my camera. Easy peasy. It's actually a really rare pattern too. <laughs> like that, that doesn't happen very often, so I'm really glad she did that. Uh, and here's the well priest I was talking about earlier, the, the second worst priest. Right now he's being easy, he's just chilling. Now, it looks like this is going by smoothly, uh, but this is like really slow. Oh, sir. So the pattern that you would want, the pattern that you want is for him to do his, uh, like T-Pose spread eagle attack where he flies towards you. That's what you want because it basically what happens is you dodge him and you're able to run to random lightning. You're able to run towards the exit, right? And as you're running towards the exit, you turn around and start taking pictures of him. So not only uh not only are you getting a better position but you're also already moving towards the exit, which does save time. Uh, so the difference between what I just got, which is like the second best thing that can happen, and the best pattern is probably about five seconds, which is massive. Again, like I said, this game is not easy to get record in because of all the insane RNG. Also, quick side note, uh, I looked up the uh, the Courage games for you, and he only ever existed in racing games. Which ones? Some Cartoon Network racing games, which are like weird kart racers, and I think a Game Boy Advance game. Huh. And apparently there's also some Cartoon Network site game that had him, but th that's about it. The things he does for love. Apparently race carts. <laughs> I actually, uh, I'm curious. I'm gonna look that up now. I want to see courage in action. Going for the gold. So here we're, we're actually going ahead and solving the puzzle after we've uh, thought all of the wandering monks or, you know, as I like to call them, the priests or the priesty boys. And solving this puzzle uh, then leads us to finding a trail of blood coming from the seal to what appears to be an alternative entrance to an underground area. And we're going to be following the blood because that's what you do in horror games. You find a trail of blood and you follow it in order to uncover the madness. But really, we're just going to be fighting uh, the family master again, which is the second and final time you'll fight him. And this is the fight. You know how I mentioned the crazy Yoshimitsu, like, ultra combo? This is the fight where he does that. So, If it happens, it happens. But luckily, I have a stone mirror. And stone mirrors in this game allow you to regain your health to full when you die. And you only get to keep one on you at a time. And I made sure to pick up some extra healing items so that I can keep that stone mirror just in case this fight uh, goes really badly. The things I do for love. I love I love that show as a kid. Oh, it's a classic. Oh. It definitely uh, built into me liking horror myself. I know that much. 
peek in the curiosities. So here he is. He starts, uh, he starts off spawns like all the way in the back of the room, which actually does give you a very good opportunity to just do a little bit of damage before he gets close. So right here, he's he's doing that crazy attack I was talking about. It's 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 pretty easy to catch him or dodge him, but like if you let him do that, oh he he destroys you. It's insane. Uh, but I'm gonna do a quick shot attempt right there. Boom! Finish off the fight. Very good fight. Very, very good fight, actually. Um, yeah, super safe, you know. Wasn't too slow. And it's very important to stay next to the door here so that you can just automatically turn around and press X to open it because that is also a lot of uh, time save. So being able to finish off the fight quickly and stay next to the door is very good. It's a very clean Family Master 2 fight. But yeah, he, uh, he's got some crazy combo moves to take out your entire health bar. <clears throat> so uh, really quick, as a bit of an off-topic thing, since we are finishing up night three and going into the final night, uh, do you have anyone you would want to give any shout-outs to? Could be anything, anyone? Uh, I mean, I gave a couple of shout-outs earlier. Uh, Alien, yeah. the other top runner of this game, uh, definitely... Definitely a very nice rivalry he and I have had to optimize this game even further. Uh, Speedword for kind of being like one of the OGs to put this game a little bit more on the map in terms of the speedrunning scene. Did a lot of uh, routing and, and optimizations and whatnot. Um, the just yeah, just like generally. The Fatal Frame community is like pretty cool. That was close. I almost did there. Um, and then obviously, shoutouts to you for inviting me to do this, and then de-rusting the game that led to just getting world record suddenly. Uh, hey, you you love to see it. I'll say that. We love to see it. Yeah. It's good having you on so far. It's it's good stuff. And Fatal Frame is I know one of those games that. It's, I feel like it's a big franchise, but it doesn't get the same love that like Silent Hill and Resident Evil do, especially in the world of speedrunning. Given that I think this is really the major active of the series, uh, it is. I I completely agree. Um, and I I think it's because the learning curve, like the barrier of entry, you know, Fatal Frame is. I'm just gonna say flat out, the most popular Resident Evil games uh, are usually pretty easy to learn, pretty easy to run. The In fact, the, the only thing that'll be hard about them is trying to get them working on PC, because those old PC ports are pretty garbo for updated software and hardware. Um, and Silent Hill is kind of the same. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the more popular Silent Hill runs are like very easy to learn and very easy to get into. This game, not quite. It's not as easy to learn. It's not as easy to get into, but um, I do think it's extremely rewarding. You know, uh, it's got a lot of RNG, so it, it's nice because you don't have to reset. You may think, oh man, I messed up this room so badly, I should probably reset, but you don't have to. You don't have to. You can just, you know, keep going and still possibly PB by minutes because some part of the game went really well. Uh, so, you know, you can invest a good amount of time into it. It's a very good run, but like you said, it's, it's definitely not as popular. And yeah. I do think that Fatal Frame 1 is the best Fatal Frame speedrun. And if there's anybody who ever wanted to get into running one of the games, it, I highly suggest it being this one because of the quick shot tech. It makes the run way, way cool, way cooler. And uh, kind of eliminates a little bit of the RNG that used to be in the run. Th this game actually used to be even more luck dependent than it is right now, uh, before Quickshot was really used as much. The Quickshot makes some of the fights much more consistent and doable, so, yeah. And I know I, uh, I definitely want to say, in terms of the uh, the speedruns from the crypt here, like Fatal Frame, I had like three different episodes I wanted to try to slot this into, <laughs> and ultimately we decided on this one with the, uh, the, the, let's say the unique or special tools, because I felt like it was a good fit for the debut episode. I agree. I mean, the camera obscura is very unique. Uh, 
uh, a unique thing. It's, it's not really something that's touched on very often in the horror genre of games. So. All right. Anyway, back to Night 4. Here's Dumb and Dumber. I, yeah, <laughs> that's what I call these ghosts, Dumb and Dumber, because it's one of them's kind of dumb and the other one is, is just really, really dumb. Uh, this one's dumb. The other one is dumber. Dumber just like flies left and right at insane speeds and like flies into walls and doesn't actually do anything useful to attacking Miku. Just a He's nuisance. doing his best. <laughs> He's doing his best. His best. Like look, look, look! You don't even know where he is. Like, where, where even is he? Like if I was on world record pace, I'd be I'd, I'd be peeing myself right now. <laughs> Cause he's just, he's not here. He forgot what he was doing. <laughs> he forgot the show time. <laughs> and that is why he is dumber. Uh, I do speedrun Fatal Frame 2, but let me tell you, Fatal Frame 2 is not as, not as cool. It's, it's, it's basically the same concept and it's got some really cool fights, but uh, you can lose like two two minutes if you get bad luck, whereas like in Fatal Frame One, you lose maybe like fifteen to thirty seconds. So Fatal Frame Two is a bit of a drag, bit of a drag, and it's also not as active. Fatal Frame One, you know, you have fights, you have ghost fights, like you have a bunch of fights all the time to optimize and work on. Yeah, it's sick. I'm not saying Fatal Frame 2 is a bad speedrun or anything, it's just much more luck dependent and it can be a bit of a drag to, uh, to do runs of if you get bad luck and stuff. So right here is the Rope Shrine Maiden, uh, e easiest ghost in, in the game. Just, I mean you have the Type 0 film, your camera is upgraded quite a bit, and you just, you finish her off super easy. Uh, but. After the Rope Shrine Maiden is the final boss in the game, Kyrie. Kyrie is the little girl who was supposed to be the person to make sure that the calamity doesn't happen. But she was so torn between, you know, performing the ritual and saving everybody from the calamity and staying alive to experience, you know, the rest of life and, you know, what it's like to love and live and whatnot. And Kyrie is a one-shot kill. Mavuyu. So everybody, <laughs> if something happens, something happens. But let's see if she gives me the pattern we need. Let's go. She did not give me the pattern I need. <laughs> oh, no. And now, and now, now this, oh, oh, thank you. And now we shake. We just, I'm shaking in boots. Well, it is a scary game. Yes. It's just one of those games where it's not over until it's over. She dictates if it's over or not. So yeah, once you once you actually take a photo of her, you can stun lock her like this. And that's it. That is Kyrie. Thanks, Kyrie, for cooperating, kind of. Also, you can run into her right here and get a game over. I've done that before on a PB pace run many, many, many years ago. Uh, it sucks. Time, by the way. That's it. That's Great Fatal Frame. <laughs> I don't Good. even know what time Give I got. What time did I get? Uh, roughly, I think around 117. Hey. Underestimates. Very nice. Always a good thing to see. Yeah. And then this is the whole cutscene where, like, you, you know, you find <laughs> Mafuyu and Kyrie, and... We can show on for a little bit, show off the oh, ending. Goodness. It's always nice to see it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, while we are watching this cutscene, uh, Maxi, where can people find you on Twitch or, you know, yeah. Maxi Lobes is my at on everything, you know. Twitter at Maxi Lobes, 
Instagram at Maxi Lobes. My YouTube is Don't Maxi Lobes. Your duty. I stream on Twitch like every day except for Fridays and the occasional extra days off. Uh, so twitch.tv slash Maxi Lobes. I speed run a lot of games, by the way. Uh, I have world records for Devil May Cry 1, Fear 1, Fear 2, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Last night, I got this world record back. Uh, I speedrun stuff like Shenmue, uh, Condemned, uh, Deadly Premonition, Resident Evil. Very one, nice roster. You know, Resident My Evil Seven, Silent Hill, closed. One, Two, Three, and Four. I bug snacks. Yo, bug snacks though. That's a hype run. That's a hype run. I've been hearing about it. Yeah, it's 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 actually a really cool run. I run Visage. Just just a ton of games. A ton. Yeah, it was good having you on here with Fatal Frame. Always good to see the ending. Yeah, this was really dope. Shoutouts to Bowie and Punchy. The only we should do. Those, those were cool. <gasps> Leave the escape to me. The rest of you, hurry and escape. But what about you? I must stop the calamity. Or else it will happen again. So I just love how the ending is just nothing mattered. Don't worry about me. Yeah. Go. This is canon. Were you just like... It is. <laughs> Where he just kind of goes like, uh, you know what? I I'm cool down here. It's all right. Come on. And then Miku is just like, we gotta go. This place is coming down. I must stay. What are you saying? I think I can help her. And then it's like Mafuyu's like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stay here. It's, I like it here I now. It's chill. Place. It's less black and white now, and there's color you can see. <laughs> That's true. The only time you play as him, it's black and white. Miku. See, now he has color in his the life. He's happy. Was yeah. guiding me. I could hear her screaming. And then this is like and the whole. A, this is like Mafuyu's yeah. whole spiel about how for help. you know how he went into the mansion and found out all as this the stuff. Shrine maiden, she was you know, destined her to seal the gate crying for help and stuff yet she also it's actually a really cool story what she loved like all of the lore all the ghosts and all, like all that stuff is super super being cool torn apart but the ending is really cheesy because it ends up being the calamity like you know her spirit was touched about by the malice the, and she became a creature that i like how for you and all this in the two minutes had. you played as him yeah he was in the mansion for two minutes. He was in the mansion for two minutes. He was about to fulfill her duty as the rope shrine maiden. And he experienced all of this. All her soul must remain here, keeping this Also, wait, why doesn't she have, like, the PS2 hands that Miku had? I don't know. All alone. That's a good question. Just especially PlayStation hands. As long as she is free of pain. Yeah, she has like a few different models. As as she has she like her ghost model, hopeless. her child model, her grown up model. I wish to be by her side. Because also, I can uh, see the time now. You got a 117.30 precisely. Nice. Mostly you. That's solid. Yeah. All things considered, really. Pretty good. It's about. Also, I just love the uh, the ending on this part, which... Their yeah. souls are all going back all to the where lights. they belong. It's got a very nice... This is the spirit, huh? You know? It does. It's a very sweet ending Miku. for uh, a spooky game, but... Um, aren't they all actually? They're always was nice here. endings to these games. It's just kind of the upside. Yeah. You know. And I will accept this destiny of mine. See in the light, you know, in the, in the dark situations. Miku. Thank All you. Right. Well, once again, Maxi, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you for showing out, out Fatal Frame. It was great having you. Yeah, man. I I quite enjoyed that. It was nice to Ever just chill and do a run and show I it off. And I hope everybody that enjoyed. Don't see. Uh, and yeah. It's always the most important part. Mm -hmm. Hope you all had a great time, everyone. Uh, let's see if we can uh, move on over for some final words before we kind of uh, wrap it all up for this show. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Although I don't know when the swap happens. Cool. All right. So once again, I want to say thank you all for watching, uh, staying with us through these speed runs from the crypt.
Uh, this is the debut episode of our new GDQ horror show that will be happening every other Wednesday, twice a month. As you saw here, we had a lot of great runners uh, over uh, overcoming the odds in these games with the special help from a variety of things, you know, the different tools, the different people. It's a very family-oriented vibe, and I feel like this is a fitting time for Thanksgiving in a sense, so. I do hope you all have a happy holiday. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, plenty of things coming up in terms of the GDQ sphere of things. We have HEDQ 2021 online coming up in January. And in addition to that, we have the GDQ West Coast weekend coming up next, I think it, just in a week or two, I believe. Uh, I have been your host, Ictisis. I want to thank you all again for watching and have a great, wonderful, spooky night. Thank you once again, and we'll find someone to uh, share with. <laughs>